The Browns won the toss and have elected to receive. Roger Ruzek is the place kicker for the Cowboys. He has been hot of late. Ruzek has connected on his last seven field goals. He'll be booting away now for the Cleveland Browns, coming in with an 8-5 and five record on the season, having won two straight games, including last week's contest at Washington. Dropping back for the Browns, Glenn Young. He'll be joined on the goal line by Herman Fontenot. Glenn Young, Herman Fontenot back deep to receive the kick of Roger Ruzik. The Cowboys 2-11 and 11 on the season, having lost nine games in a row. Only the second time this season, Dallas donning the dark jerseys as today they're playing at ice-cold Cleveland Stadium. We are underway. Ruzek's kick comes to Young at the 8. To the 28-yard line, Glenn Young on the return, stopped by rookie Billy Owens. And out comes Bernie Kosar. Marty Schottenheimer said his best game of the year was last week's performance against the Washington Redskins. He'll face the Dallas defense up front. Ed Jones and Jim Jeffcoat are the ends. Brooks and Noonan are the tackles for the Dallas defense. Linebackers Burton, Lockhart, and Gary Cobb. And in the secondary for Dallas, Everson Walls, Robert Williams, Michael Downs, and Bill Bates. Mack and Biner in the backfield. Biner in motion from the 28th. First down for Cleveland. That's Mack. Fumbles the football. It's scooped up by the Cowboys. And Everson Walls has it for Dallas at the 25-yard line. A turnover on the first play of the game. Ron Burton jarred it loose. Well, Bur Bernie gets the zone here, Jim, and he's going to give the first look downfield. He's got an outlet. You see Biner to the right-hand side of your screen. He goes to him. And it's just a uh, situation where he gets his hat on the ball and knocks it loose. It's the very thing that you can't do with a 2-11 and 11 ball club. You can't come out and you can't give them life earlier. It's going to be a long day for you. Everson Walls recovering the fumble for the Cowboys. And they open up the game at the 25-yard line of the Browns after the turnover. Cleveland now minus one in the takeaway giveaway ratio. Dallas in that category is tied for last in the NFL with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Minus 21 on the season. They have turned it over 21 more times than they have recovered turnovers. Steve Pelour is the quarterback. And on first down, play action fake the top foul. Pelour throwing. That is Fowler at the 20, inside the 15, down to the 13, Todd Fowler. First down, Dallas Cowboys. Stopped by Eddie Johnson and Clay Matthews. Gain a 12 on the play. Sam Clancy, Bob Golick, and Big Daddy Carl Hairston on the defensive front for the Cleveland Browns. Linebackers, Grayson and Matthews on the outside. Johnson and Johnson on the inside for the Browns. And in the secondary, a great one it is. Frank Minifield and Hanford Dixon the two corners, Felix Wright and Will Hill, are the safeties. Fowler and Herschel Walker split behind Pelour. Here's the pitch to Walker. He picks up two yards before being stopped by Clay Matthews and Mike Johnson. But set the Dallas offense. Pelour starting now. After a two-game respite, Pelour came back and started on Thanksgiving Day. Kevin Sweeney had stepped in for two games. Herschel Walker and Todd Fowler in the backfield. Fowler starting again for the injured Timmy Newsom. Ray Alexander and the rookie Michael Irvin are the receivers. And Thornton Chandler is the Dallas tight end. We'll call it second and nine from the 12-yard line. Michael Irvin comes out of the backfield in motion. Fowler and Walker remain. Here's the give to Walker off right tackle. And again, he's stuffed after a short gain. Mike Johnson again on the tackle. The leading tackler for the Browns is Mike Johnson in his third season out of Virginia Tech. 
On the defensive side of the ball, Jim, what they're going to have to do is the first thing they have to do is you have to take a look at Herschel Walker, find out where he is. They've got to stop him. They can't let him get started early. They would like to force him into a game where Pelour has to carry him by throwing the ball. And they have to get good first down plays in order to keep the Cleveland defense off balance. Cleveland's defense, once the opponent has gotten inside the 20, number one in the NFL as far as disallowing the opponent to get into the end zone. Now out of the shotgun with a four-receiver set for Dallas. Walker in motion, and the Cowboys jump. Well, I tell you what, uh, it's going to be a problem because of all the crowd noise, and when the quarterback is in the shotgun, he's back off the line five or six yards. They're going to have a, a, a tough time uh, today hearing the audible situation because, because of this noisy Cleveland crowd. Encroachment number 34, offense. That foul preceded the 45-second clock running out. Jerry Seaman is our referee today. So that'll back Dallas to the 15-yard line. Third and 12. Herschel Walker playing against the Browns for the first time in his career. Now, as far as flag football, these are the teams with the most infractions this year. The Cowboys rank third in the league. There's the crowd noise we talked about. Makes it awfully tough. Again out of the shotgun. Cleveland brings in Will Hill as the extra defensive back on third and 12. Shuffle pass is read by Clancy. Clancy read that play all the way as Pelluer quickly dumped it off to Herschel Walker and Ruzak will have to attempt the field goal. Well, it's a little shuffle pass out of a spread type formation. Give him a look that looks like you're going to throw the ball. You try to sneak Herschel Walker underneath the little shovel thing. Sam Clancy's all over it. Sam Clancy, the former foot, the former basketball player out of the University of Pittsburgh. Roger Ruzek will attempt now a field goal of 38 yards. Steve Fleur is the holder. 38-yard attempt for Ruzek, who has been good on his last seven attempts. Kick by Ruzek is good, but there is a flag down. The flag down, and Cleveland motioning it's against the Cowboys. So take away the field goal, and Ruzek will have to attempt again. Ruzek in his second season with the Cowboys out of Weber State College in Ogden, Utah. Illegal hands to the face, number 78 offense, still fourth down. This will certainly add length to Ruzek's attempt. He made a 50-yarder this year. That's the longest of his career. Former teammate of Herschel Walker with the New Jersey Generals is this place kicker. Now this will be a 48-yard try for Roger Ruzek. of Texas picks it up Cleveland and Dallas are scoreless a snake Clay Matthews made the play here for the Browns well you see him circled right there and the easiest place to block a field goal is right up the middle that's where Matthews gets the penetration right in the middle right in front of the kicker and they block it and dodge a bullet Herman Fontenot in the game as a receiver lined up wide on the left side three receiver set for the Browns at first down Biner gets the carry Works his way past the 30-yard line. Here's the report now from the Cleveland sideline. Kevin Mack has been taken to the locker room for x-rays of his hand. Kenny, he was the one who fumbled the football on the Browns' first play from scrimmage. Yeah, it looked like they got a lick on, right on the hand when he did fumble. Mack had been the starter. Fontenot is in there now. 
Langhorn and Weathers are the receivers. And the great one, Ozzie Newsom, is still the tight end, of course, here for the Cleveland Browns. Second and eight for Cleveland. Fontenot now wide on the right side. Reggie Langhorn in motion. Weathers to the left. Kozar with good time. And he has Brian Brennan near midfield. Sure-handed Brian Brennan. First down for Cleveland. Well, here's what you got to deal with when you deal with Bernie Kosar. He gets back. The ball is gone to hurry. Look how quick he gets rid of the ball once he sees his man. Zap. The ball's gone. Throws a strike right on the numbers. If they don't get any pressure on Bernie Kosar today, the Dallas front four doesn't get any kind of pressure, he's going to make it a long day. Well, Bernie picked up 17 on the completion to Brennan. Ball at midfield. First and 10 for Cleveland. Biner and Fontenot in the backfield. Behind Kosar. Newsom in motion. Here's the give to Biner. Eugene Lockhart hits him after a gain of three yards. Another thing we can look for, Jim, this running attack of Cleveland is built around an offensive line that is a straight-ahead tight blocking outfit. They block straight ahead. They don't have the great outside speed. They have backs that run straight ahead in Biner and Mack. They don't have the great outside threat. This you see right here is a style of running game we will see from them straight ahead. Good block on the play by number 77, Ricky Bolden, who's filling in today for Larry Williams at left guard. Williams out with a shoulder injury, suffered while lifting weights on Monday. So Bolden fills in in his third season out of SMU. Second and six from the Dallas 46. Herman Fontenot, Eugene Lockhart wraps him up at the 44. Gain of three on the play. The Giants on the board against the Cardinals. Key game in the NFC East. And there's a game Cowboy fans will be watching very closely. Green Bay and Detroit. Should Green Bay win today against the Lions and the Cowboys lose, the Dallas right now would have the inside track for the first pick in the draft which would be Troy Aikman, the quarterback of UCLA. I think they might like to have a new trigger man. Third and three, flags down. Pass is caught by Brennan. He's inside the 30. But a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Jim Jeffco may have jumped for Dallas. Offside, number 99, 95, defense, penalty decline, first down. Called against Mark Whalen, defensive tackle, so it's a 14-yard pickup on the pass play. First and 10 for Cleveland from the 30. One of the ways you can slow down a real good pass rush is the quarterback can use his voice, make him jump, keep him off balance. Miner in the backfield, the lone setback. Herman Fontenot wide to the left. Weathers slot left. Langhorn and Newsom on the right side. Dallas showing blitz. They back off. Good time for Kozar. Pass is caught at the 25. Pass caught by Clarence Weathers in his sixth season. Out of Delaware State. He's down. Clarence Weathers. This team, Kenny, misses Webster Slaughter. No doubt. Any, anytime you have a player like that who has the ability to make the big play and you lose him out of your offense, somebody has to take up the slack. In this particular situation, Reggie Langhorn has been the guy that has come in and taken up the slack there. Langhorn's done an outstanding job. Career-high 42 receptions on the season. Weathers is starting in replace of Webster Slaughter. He made the reception here. He's the man down on the field. Well, you give Bernie Kosar that kind of time, and he gets to look at the defense that long. He's a very smart, intelligent quarterback, sees the field extremely well, and you give him that kind of time, he's going to eventually find someone. Crunched by Steve Diossi, and he is still down on the field. 7.25 left of the first quarter. No score. If you thought you had to give up comfort to get a close shave, Norelco says, think again. Their revolutionary shaving system shaves skin close in a way that's incredibly comfortable. As the hair enters the chamber, the patented lift and cut system lifts each hair and holds it a split second before a blade cuts it, 
so it's possible to shave skin close without the blades even touching the skin. The lift and cut shaving system from Norelco. We made close comfortable. Give your car better pickup with the Black & Decker Car Vac Plus. The most powerful car vacuum made. The Black & Decker Car Vac Plus leaves everything else in the dust. Regardless of what some people think, all spark plugs aren't alike. These AC Copper Core plugs match my car's specs for up to 30,000 miles of high revving firepower. AC Delco parts. They don't just fit, they match. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Crater of Fire. Chevy S10 versus Ford Ranger in a tug of war of power. And there they go. Two compact pickups with biggest available engines and automatics. The Ford's trying, but look at that Chevy S10 power. Its bigger V6 is just too strong for Ford. Chevy S10, when it comes to pickups, no wonder America is having a change of heart. Tickets to the chalkboard. Tell us what happened. Well, take a, take, take a look at his left leg. It's a, little, it's a little hook pattern. Little hook pattern. He turns around, faces the quarterback like he should. Get his body between the ball and the receiver. Watch his left leg right there. See, it's folded up under him. All the weight of number 55, the linebacker on top of him, causes the injury. And he was carried off the field. Now on the Dallas bench. Second and five for the Browns. Biner, the lone setback. Fontenot wide to the right. Langhorne slot right. Ryan Brennan on the left side. Reiner changing direction, but he'll lose yardage. A loss of one. Kevin Brooks brought him down in the backfield. Well, Biner smartly just takes as much as he can get. He's not the type back that can reverse field and go around the end for a long run or make something happen. They're straight ahead tight backs. Don't try that turnaround thing. Just get up there, get the ball down, and start over. Again, Cleveland is without Webster Slaughter. He is on the injured reserve list. Marty Schottenheimer told us this week the Slaughter most likely will be back for the final regular season game against the Houston Oilers. Now with Weathers out, we'll be seeing more of Gerald McNeil and Brian Brennan. Six backs in for the Cowboys. Francis is in there to help out along with Manny Hendricks. On third and seven, here's the rush by Whalen. He's picked off. Kozar will tuck it in and get out of bounds. Everson Walls forced him out. Mark Whalen, a backup, putting some good pressure on Kosar, Kenny. Yeah, and you know, the pressure that he gets on Kosar, Jim, comes from right up the middle. That's the, that's the pressure that is hardest to handle for a quarterback because you can't see once they get that kind of penetration. You see Whalen chasing Bernie. Once you get him out of the pocket, you, you, you basically have him where you want him because Bernie is not the great athlete, not the great runner, say, as an, as an ill way. Matt Barr. Look at that, 22 for 27 on the season. And this is a 44-yard attempt with the punter, Max Runniger, holding. It's a fake, hey. Runniger to Barr. Barr trying to beat Burton, and Ron Burton wraps him up. Short of the first down, not even close, a big loss on the play. Well, it's easy to sit up here and second guess, but when you have a team that has to win, a team that has to win, and you start throwing the ball to your kicker, I have a little bit of a problem with that. When you've got a quarterback like Bernie Kostar, he didn't get it done. Let's don't take any points off the board. Let's go ahead and kick this, get ahead, and make Dallas play catch up from the get-go. So Dallas and Cleveland both denied to this point in the first quarter. You've seen Ford do this. Call, big downer for the defense that turned the ball back over to him. Ron Burton put a hurt on Matt Barr. They're fortunate the kicker was able to get off the field. That was a big hit. On first down, Herschel Walker plowing his way for a first down before he's knocked out of bounds. Let's well, see what happens. You have a play like that, you don't get any points out of it, and it gives the other team an awful lot of life. Even though they're 2-11, and 11, these guys are still drawing a paycheck, and they're going to come out here, and they're going to play hard. You give them life, and it makes, it, makes it a long day. A wipe out the 14-yard gain for Walker holding against the Cowboys. Tom Landry and holding the Cowboys. Number 88 offense, still first down. Michael Irvin, the rookie receiver on that right side, helped clear the way, but he did it with a holding penalty. And back go the Cowboys. 
a tragedy this week in Herschel Walker's life. On Monday, his 31-year-old brother, Renneth, was killed in an industrial accident. His brother, Renneth, was the first member of the family to play football, the first one also to go to college. He was very close to his brother. The funeral was yesterday in Georgia. Walker flew in last night late for this contest. And Herschel gets the carry on first and nine. And he's stopped by Hanford Dixon. We have an update from New York. Let's send you back to the studios. And here's Brent Musburger. Brent. Jim, here's what's going on around the league right now. Phil Simms wearing gloves, moving the Giants. 15-yard touchdown pass to Robinson. And the Giants over the Cardinals now by a big 10 points. Meanwhile, in the AFC, the Bengals bounce in with a touchdown. Number 14 on the season for Icky Woods. They blew the extra point. 6-3 there. Back to Jim. Five minutes and 25 seconds left here in the first quarter. No score. Extra back in now for the Browns. Will Hill joins him in the secondary on second and nine for Dallas. Irvin in motion. Clacks in the backfield with Walker. Flag flies. Palour throws over the head of Darrell Flack at midfield. Mike Johnson on the coverage, but a flag down in the Dallas backfield. Kenny, we saw a graphic earlier. The Cowboys are the third most penalized team in the National Football League. I think I think one thing you can look at, Jim, when you when you talk about penalties, especially on the Dallas side of the ball, is their youth. They've got you take Rafferty out of the offensive line, you've got an extremely young offensive line. They're they're young on defense, and their wide receivers are young, a, a young quarterback, basically a young team. Young team is going to make mistakes. Illegal hands to face. Number 68 offense. Still second down. Here's on the right side is Crawford Kerr, number 68, Kenny. Well, that's a no-no. You know, you can't get your hands up around the head up under the face mask. You've got to you can get your hands out, but not around the face mask or head area. That's four penalties against the Cowboys in the opening quarter. Four penalties, 35 yards in all. They've been backed up. And now it's a second down play for Dallas. Second and 19. This kind of situation that Dallas does not want to be in with a young offensive line is these predictable passing situations where the Browns can lay their ears back and come after you. No shotgun. Clack and Walker in the backfield split behind Palour. Alexander to the right. Irvin to the left. Palour swings it out to Clack at the 30 and out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Daryl Clack. Knocked out by Hanford Dixon. Clack in his third season out of Arizona State. He picks up 11 on the play. Bring up a third and eight for the Cowboys. Long yardage. Cleveland gave him a, a zone type defense. Drop the secondary back. Drop the linebackers back. Make you take the underneath stuff and come up and make the play. Kenny, what do you think about Steve Pelour, the Cowboys quarterback who has been so heavily criticized at, back down home in Dallas? Well, I think uh, he, he has made some mistakes and he has played well. You know, he's been inconsistent. The mistakes he's made, Jim, have been critical because they've been in scoring area or either coming out of your own territory, and those mistakes kill you. Three receivers out of the shotgun now is Pelour. Kelvin Martin drew, joins the receiving core. Pelour steps forward. Sam Clancy grabs him by the ankles. And it's punting time for the Cowboys. Well, you talk to their defensive coordinator and talk to their defensive people. One of the things that they're going to do to young Steve Pelour is they're going to put an awful lot of pressure on him by bringing people. They're going to bring people from the outside in the middle. They're going to bring a lot of people after him and pressure him, make him rush everything that he does. And they see right here, they get outside pressure, force him up in the middle of the pocket, and they make the play. So on fourth and seven, Mike Saxon to punt for the first time today. Gerald McNeil back for Cleveland at his own 20. And a high kick, spiraling kick, comes to McNeil at the 15. Breaks one tackle, but then is swarmed under. Ron Burton again makes the tackle. That's two big plays by Burton on special teams. He denied Matt Barr on the fake field goal and stops McNeil on the punt return. We're in the first quarter, four minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Well, the dogs are already getting lathered up here in the first quarter. You know, Cleveland is the only team in the National Football League without a logo. 
team felt like it needed an identity. And really, Hanford Dixon started this whole dog defense and has turned into a nickname for the whole team, the dogs. He really did. He, he did it by barking at the defensive line to help him get a pass rush, by barking at him like a dog chasing a cat. Langhorn and Fontenot. Wide to the right side, Brennan to the left. Play action fake, here's the pass to Fontenot at the 20 on one knee. Bill Bates and Everson Walls combine on the stop after a seven yard gain. Bill Bates, the leading tackler for the Cowboys. Well, that's a matchup that they that they won't mind taking. If you can get, uh, get a back like Fontenot out and you can make a, a strong safety, which is usually the weaker cover guy in the secondary, the weakest cover guy in the secondary, strong safety, get him out one-on-one -on -one and he's gonna play off, give the receiver an awful lot of yards and you just take that. Create the short yardage situations like we have here. Seattle and New England, two other teams pursuing wild card spots, although Seattle, of course, is still in that divisional race out in the West, very much into that. But all those teams around seven and six, eight and five are right up against each other with three weeks to go in the season. Ernest Biner on the carry. Eugene Lockhart locks him down at the 25-yard line. Gain of one on the play. Okay, right here, what you're going to see is you're going to see Lockhart, the middle linebacker, and his job is to roam from side to side. Watch him come here. Watch this. There he goes. He sees the play breaking. Now he takes the angle of pursuit to cut him off and makes the play. Ron Burton, again, was the first man to get near him, and Eugene Lockhart finished him off. We'll measure for the first down. You know, Marty Schottenheimer's been maligned an awful lot because of not being imaginative on offense, but they really don't have the people that it takes to be real imaginative. They've got a straight-ahead blocking offensive line, Jim. They've got two big, strong backs that have basically gained the same amount of yardage this year, 450 or so yards apiece, and they are a straight-ahead, straight-ahead, power-blocking outfit and protect your quarterback, and he is a great young quarterback, and that's their style of play. It's not an exciting style, but it's, it's very, uh, very effective. And they've had to battle the injuries. Kosar earlier in the year. Absolutely, plus, especially to him. Plus two more starters who stepped in or knocked out by injury. They've lost two players to this point in the first quarter. Kevin Mack and Clarence Weathers both have been knocked out of action. Biner and Baker in the backfield. Make that Tim Manoa in the backfield on third and one. Flag falls. Play is stopped. It's going against Cleveland. False start prior to the snap. Number 81 offense, still third down. Kenny, really, Bernie Kosar is just right now getting into the groove. I agree. Uh, coming off of the injury, uh, the arm is not 100%. We spoke with him yesterday. It's taped. He has a rubber sleeve over his arm. We may, be, we may see him throwing the ball on the sideline between series to try to keep it warm. Uh, coming back off the injury, you, you have to get refilled of, of the receivers. But I think they're really extremely happy to have him back. They're coming off of their best outing against Washington. I think the team is probably better right now than it has been in a long time. He missed six games in all to Bernie Kosar. He's not pretty doing it, but he gets it done. And back now for some six weeks, getting the rust out. Third and six. Finer the lone setback. Here's the pass incomplete intended for Brian Brennan. Oh, and a late flag on Ron Francis. Ron Francis will be flagged here for the infraction. Pass interference, number 38 defense, first down. Francis in his second year out of Baylor. Well, they get a man-to-man -man coverage. They're trying to put pressure on Bernie. You see Randy White coming from the left side. It's going to be extremely tight coverage, but uh, not quite that tight. Uh, Brian Brennan, a possession-type receiver, runs a good routes. Look for him to catch the ball underneath the coverage today. Fontenot to the right. Langhorn slot right. On first and ten for Cleveland. Finer in the backfield. He gets the carry. Pick up of two on the play for Ernest Biner. Clarence Weathers is back in the game now for Cleveland. He has been helped off earlier in this quarter with that knee injury. Now he's going back to the sidelines. Ernest Biner, the enforcer on offense. He's the guy, if anything breaks out, any extracurricular activities out there breaks out, 
you look for him to be right in the middle of it. Extremely tough guy, physically tough, and he's had to be really mentally tough too after the fumble thing. They've uh, they've maligned him in the local papers around here, but he's really handled it extremely well. A first class individual. Langhorn to the right, Fontenot to the left, Brennan slot left, Viner in the backfield, Ozzie Newsom now shifting on second and eight, and again the play is whistled dead. Dallas was blitzing on that play. Ron Burton came in quickly, but all for naught. And again, Jerry Seaman with the call. Delay of game, offense still second down. Snake, what do you remember about playing here at Cleveland Stadium on a cold afternoon? Just about like this, crowd noise. Crowd noise is always a problem here. It's, a, I guess, the capacity-wise, the largest in the league, and these people are avid fans, and you get these dogs in the end zone down here, you get them all lathered up and barking and raising cane. <laughs> it, it makes for a kind of a fun place to play, but the crowd can be a factor in the game, especially down around the goal lines, going in and coming out. They come dressed up in their dog outfits for you these games. You get papers on about half of this group. <laughs> Again, yellow flags everywhere on second and 13. Encroachment, number 98 defense, still second down. Kenny, this time it goes against the Cowboys. Well, they're jumping around. They're trying to give Bernie a lot of different looks, you know, and try to confuse him to, to make him uh, see something that he thinks might happen and back out of it. Just give him a lot of look. Extremely smart quarterback, and you try to, you, you have to try to do as many things defensively to him as you can. If you let him get in a rhythm where he knows what you're doing, you're in trouble. Back to second and eight. The Cowboys now have been flagged six times in the first quarter after only two penalties in their last game against Houston. Pass is caught by Langhorn at the 40. Cuts to the right side. He's at midfield. Everson Walls is knocked off. Oh. And there goes Reggie Langhorn for a touchdown. Brian Brennan threw a big block. Brian Brennan finished off Everson Walls, who was the only man with a shot at Reggie Langhorn who ran to the right side and found open room. And the Browns are on the board with the big play. Seventy three yards. Well, here it is. You're going to see him coming from the left hand side of your screen. Makes the play right there. Nicely thrown. Watch the block by Brian Brennan right there. That's Excedrin headache number whatever. Big play. This is the guy that has come up with the big plays for Cleveland. Reggie Langhorn. Extra point is good by Matt Barr. And Reggie Langhorn runs 73 yards after the reception from Bernie Kosar. And a beautiful block by Brian Brennan to set him free. And the Browns lead with 35 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Seven to nothing. Bernie Kosar's numbers here in the first quarter, of course, they were certainly padded with the run after the catch on this play. Look at that stance of Bernie Kosar under the center, right leg back, left leg forward. The reason they do that is Bernie's not the quickest guy in town. Not the best athlete on the field. He has a little trouble getting out from under the center, running into guards. The, the offensive linemen have a tendency to step on his feet, which that can't be much fun either. So what they do is they cheat that one leg back and try to get him out from under the center as quick as they can. He hasn't missed 118 yards passing. 73 of it on that play. That's what they have to have, is they have to be able to run the ball straight ahead, create the short yardage situations, and protect Bernie Kosar. That's the way this team has to play offensively. Last week, sacked six times against Washington. You got to keep that guy as clean as you can if you're going to get in the party during the playoffs. Just a four-play drive after the explosion from Kosar to Langhorn. Seven to nothing. It is cold on the field. Right off Lake Erie, the winds come in, and it brings that wind chill factor down to about 15 degrees right now. So Matt Barr will kick away to the Cowboys, Daryl Clack and Cornell Burbage.
Burbage on the right is leading the NFC in kickoff returns. Clack is fourth. Burbage last week returned 153 yards against the Oilers, but he also fumbled a kickoff return in the fourth quarter. Bars kick, a squib kick, fielded at the 20 yard line. Fielded by Glenn Titanser. Titanser returns it to the 29 yard line. Well, they throw the ball to their kicker, and he gets banged up trying to be a receiver on the play that we talked about earlier when they had the fake field goal. That particular kickoff right there is kind of a knuckleball down through the middle. It makes you wonder whether or not maybe the bruised ribs are affecting his kicking. Could be a factor if the game stays close, and the field, you have to have a field goal to win the game. We have to keep that in mind, I suppose. Barr also has the flu today. Side, number 35 kicking team. Re-kick, five-yard penalty. Offensively for the... Dallas Cowboys, what they're going to have to do is they have to have good first down plays, Jim. They cannot get in predictable situations of second and 15 and third and 10s, those type things, because the Cleveland defense is just too tough against that situation. They've got to keep them off balance with the traps and little draws and screens and, and spread the ball around and, and have good first down plays. Very important. Now Cleveland's going to re-kick. And as you see, Tom Landry, third most wins in NFL history. Only George Havis and Don Shula have more victories. The man with the flu bug, Matt Barr, will kick away again to Daryl Clack and Cornell Burbage back deep for Dallas. Final seconds of the first quarter, 7-0 Cleveland. This ball is scooped up by Daryl Smith at the 25 and out to the 33-yard line. 21 seconds left in the first quarter. Steve Pelour, one of the few players on the field without a long sleeved sweatshirt underneath his jersey. You know, some quarterbacks really don't like anything like that. Don't like to wear a flak jacket. They don't like anything around them. They don't like anything on their arms or around their wrist area and elbow area because they think that that affects the way that they throw. I think it's just up to the individual. I, I always wore as much as I could. I hear you. So the Cowboys have it at their 34 yard line. Clack and Walker in the backfield. Pro set offense for Dallas. Michael Irvin in motion. Play action fake to Walker. Rolling right. Palour throws. It's caught by Irvin. Nice move to get away. He's at midfield and in Cleveland territory after the move to shake one tackle. Eddie Johnson finally brought him down. Kevin Max now out of the locker room. Again, he had x-rays taken of that hand. We may be seeing more of him. We're at the end of the first quarter in Cleveland with the Browns leading the Cowboys 7 to nothing. A lot of people up there, Jim. Fowler and Walker split behind Pelour. There they come. Pelour throws it down the left side, and it's over the head of Everett Gay. And I thought the Dallas line did a good job of picking up the pressure coming in on Pelour. Well, as we said, look at all these people up there. They put a lot of people up there because they're going to get a lot of pressure on the young quarterback. We touched it on that earlier. You see him jumping around up there, make him get rid of the ball. You see, he has to throw the ball extremely quick. The thing that you do get in that situation is you're guaranteed of a man-to-man -man type coverage. Our guy beats your guy. That's the first incomplete pass of the game. But a big third and nine for the Cowboys now trailing seven to nothing early stages of the second quarter. Dallas has scored only two touchdowns all year in the second quarter. Out of the shotgun. Pelour standing in the pocket, firing. He's got a man caught inside the 30, Michael Irvin. And he's down at the 28-yard line. Michael Irvin. 20-yard pickup on the play. Good protection for Pelour. Well, that's the big play guy. It hasn't been the big play guy for them this year. It's been Alexander, but this is the guy they expect us out of. Their number one draft choice, Michael Irvin. The, th the, the thing that makes this play successful, the thing that makes it happen, is they get good pass protection. They let Pelour stand back there, and if you give any quarterback enough time, they do a little surgery on you. Michael Irvin is off to a fast start in this game. Second reception of the contest. Dallas lines up in the eye. Black the fullback, Walker the tailback, Thornton Chandler the tight end in motion. 
First and ten, a handoff up the middle. Darrell Clack, he's inside the 20 and down to the 19. A flag down, however, at the line of scrimmage. Darrell Clack, we've been told, would see more action today. Marlon Jones made the tackle. Illegal procedure against the Cowboys. Again, they were only penalized last week against Houston twice. That is now seven. I believe seven penalties on the Cowboys. Illegal shift. Two men moved on offense and dot reset prior to the snap. Still first down. Referee Jerry Seaman is getting more exposure than Geraldo Rivera. <laughs> But you know, it all goes back to what we said earlier about the flag football, a lot of penalties. You get a lot of young players playing together. The other factor in, in, in the penalties in this particular game, Jim, the crowd noise. They can't hear the cadence. Based on what the quarterback says, they know when to stop and when to shift. You can't hear in here. Kelvin Martin and Everett Gay are the receivers for the Cowboys. Dallas lines up in the eye on first and 15. It's Clack and Walker. Play action fake to Walker, rolling right as Pelour. He has Clack at the 30, dancing his way down to the 25-yard line. Frank Minifield makes the tackle. Eight-yard pickup on the play to Daryl Clack. What about Minifield and Hanford Dixon? Is there a better pair of corners in the league? There can't Pro be. Probably not. You know, and the thing that really makes them good, Jim, we talked to both those guys yesterday at the same time, and the thing that makes them good is they both like their job for one. They really enjoy playing. There you see Clack catching the ball after the play fake out in the flat against the zone. But those two corners you talked about, the reason they're playing so well, they study so hard. It's film after film after film. They both started last year in the Pro Bowl. Paluro is six for seven in the game and passing. Second down and seven for Dallas. Here's the pitch to Walker. He's got room. Inside the 20, look out. Into the side the 10 and down to the five-yard line. May have stepped out before the five. They'll spot it at the seven, but that whole left side was opened up for Herschel Walker. Evidently, a couple of good blocks by Wydell and Nate Newton on the left-hand side because once you let, uh, look at the left-hand side right here. It's going to be to the right of the screen, and you let a guy that has world-class speed like Herschel Walker, and you let him get outside. See, they pin number 59 in there. He gets a good block from Fowler, number 46. Here comes Clay Matthews to help. But once that world-class speed gets outside, you're in trouble. That was a fabulous block by Fowler. Felix Wright and an 18 yard gain for Herschel Walker. I think the key to this drive, Jim, is the fact that they've had very good first down plays. They haven't put themselves in predictable situations. Dallas has to take a timeout. Kenny, I worked the game last week for CBS Radio on Thanksgiving Day, and they had two occasions where inside the 10, again, they had to call a timeout just as they do now. You hate to waste them. Time to get your gas to see the light. It takes time. It isn't always love at sight. I'm really loud. No doubt, Jim. I think when you come out of the huddle or when you come off the sidelines or whatever play they send in, you have to do something and hope you don't have to audible. They're all barking. They call that end zone the dog pound. Out of the eye, Fowler and Walker. Walker up the middle. Inside the five to the four. Daryl Sims. Mike Johnson on the tackle. To this point in the contest, with Cleveland leading seven to nothing, Kozar a perfect six for six, and the long touchdown, 73-yard touchdown pass to Reggie Langhorn. Seven penalties on the Cowboys. Total yards now starting to even up. Double tight ends now for the Cowboys as they send in Steve Fulsom to join Thornton Chandler. Both tight ends line up on the right side. Fowler goes in motion. Pitch left to Walker. Walker is dropped for a yard loss. Sam Clancy and David Grayson. They grab him at the six. It's a yard loss. David Grayson, I played with his father. His father was a safety with the Oakland Raiders. When I played a while back, young man made the team. He, he was brought in as a replacement player. Brought in as a replacement player, ran a 4-6-40. Marty, Marty Schottenheimer like that made the team and has beat out their number one draft choice. Wait, wait, wait a minute. You said you played with his father? I played with his father. It uh, doesn't seem like that long ago, but I played with his father in the uh, late 60s. Now after the loss on the carry by Walker, it is third and goal for the Cowboys from the seventh. Clacks back into the game. Walker 
Walker goes in motion. Look out, here comes the blitz. The pass caught by Clack at the five, and he gets in for the touchdown. Darrell Clack scores the touchdown for the Dallas Cowboys. Two nice efforts, one by the quarterback to get rid of the ball under extreme heavy pressure. People all over him. We said at the top of the show that they were going to put a lot of pressure on a young quarterback by bringing a lot of people. They do it. He does a great job of getting rid of the ball. Great job by Clack of extra effort to put it in the end zone. Just for good me measure, another flag on the play. I believe it's after the touchdown was scored. On sportsmanlike conduct, number 88 spiked the ball and did not score. A five-yard penalty will be assessed on the succeeding kickoff. A little overzealous, Michael Irvin, he grabbed the football out of Clack's hands and said, let me... Uh, He's working on his spike. Yeah, I got to work on it. Yeah, choreograph spike. They got to work on him occasionally. But there's a great job of getting rid of the ball. Great second effort here by Clack to drag him into the end zone. Then Irvin takes the ball and spikes it right here. He won't, he's going to enjoy this. He hasn't had the occasion to do that much this year, as a matter of fact. Here it is. Irvin just ripping the ball out of the hands of Clack. Right there. Who? Oh. As he faces the dog pound, he spikes it, but that'll cost the Cowboys on the kickoff, on the ensuing kickoff. Clack scores the touchdown. That's his first of the season. Clack did a great job of beating Brian Washington, who had a shot at him at the three-yard line. And again, with it being third and goal, and he ended up short of the goal line. Good mismatch there. You get Brian Washington to safety trying to tackle a 220-pound back, and, they, and the back's going to win that little war. And he did indeed. Roger Ruzek to attempt the extra point. Palour the holder. And we are tied. 10 minutes and 19 seconds left in the second quarter. Cleveland and Dallas, 7-7. Seven and seven. Cowboys driving 66 yards, using up over five minutes of the clock. Usually the second quarter is the most productive quarter as far as scoring points around the league, but coming in, the Cowboys had only managed 26 points in 13 games in the second quarter this year. It's only the third time they found the end zone this year in the second quarter. I think it's because of the young team again. And uh, the reason you will see the second quarter become the most productive is because all the adjustments are made through the first quarter. You try to find out what teams are doing to you on defense. You try to find out what formations are working for the other team on offense. It takes you a quarter or so to make your adjustments. In making adjustments, veteran teams are going to make those adjustments a lot easier and a lot quicker than, say, a very young Dallas football team. Good point. The Cowboys now tied 7-7. Seven and seven. And ready to kick away. Standing at the 10-yard line, Glenn Young and Herman Fontenot. Because of the penalty, the Cowboys, the penalty after the touchdown on Michael Irvin. Ruzek kicking from the 30. He squibs it, just like Barr. And on three bounces, Young picks it up at the 17. To the 30 the 33 yard line and we've got another flag well the first quarter was real sloppy with penalties it starts off this quarter with another penalty and the refs aren't letting them play it almost gets to a point where you wonder are you disrupting the flow there's no doubt I think offensively and defensively you try to get into some kind of rhythm you try to get into some kind of rhythm on offense and defense Every time there's a flag thrown, it takes you out of that rhythm. You have to stop the start. Return, number 48, receiving team. First down. Eight penalties now on the Cowboys. And we still have 10 minutes remaining in the second quarter. That's eight penalties on the Cowboys. And that one on Cleveland is number four for them. There you see Bernie Kosar. Bernie's, uh, Bernie's right arm. Bernie has got tape on his right arm he's got a rubber sleeve over the tape and the, the problem with his situation right now is keeping that injury warm he has to keep it warm by throwing the ball on the sidelines Cleveland comes out now with a three receiver set Biner in the backfield here's the pass to Biner the 30 to the 40 and near midfield with a flag down in the backfield finally stopped by Everson Walls and Eugene Lockhart, but a flag down by the quarterback. Illegal hands to the face. Number 73 defense. Penalty decline. First down. Cleveland now has it in Dallas territory. 
Penalty on Danny Noonan here, Kenny. Watch number 73 right there, Danny Noonan. Look at his left hand. Look at his left hand. He's got his left hand up under the face mask. That's a no-no. And that's a 30-yard gain on the play. To Ernest Biner. That's his longest reception of the season for Biner. And Kosar is a perfect 7 for 7. Max back in the game. He's the fullback here in the eye formation. And here's the carry by Biner. Biner picks up good yardage to the 43. A gain of six. Cleveland driving again. Let's send you back to New York with an update. Here's Brent Musburger. Jim, the Philadelphia Eagles go ahead of the Washington Redskins, and they did it because of this interception by Joyner. Now, initially, the officials called a touchdown, but he stepped out of bounds at about the 19, and from there, Randall Cunningham drove it in. 10-7, back to Jim. Here are nine minutes and ten seconds left in the second quarter. Cleveland and Dallas all tied. The Browns have it now, second and four from the Cowboys' 43-yard line. Mack and Biner again in the I formation. Behind Bernie Kosar. Derek Tunnell in the game as well as a second tight end. Here's the carry by Biner. No gain for Biner. Trying to run behind right tackle. Cody Reason. All-pro right tackle for the Cleveland Browns in his ninth year out of Texas A&M. Fairbanks High School back in Texas. Scores around the league. The Giants leading Phoenix. We just saw the update from Brent on that game. Game, of course, Cleveland fans very interested in. Cincinnati atop the AFC Central with a 10-point lead over San Diego. Exciting offense. Boomer Sasson throws the ball all over the field. They're playing really good defense in Cincinnati, too. Colts have now taken the lead on the Dolphins, 14-7. Four receiver set for Cleveland. On third and four, Kozar, left side, Brennan, first down. Down to the 31-yard line. That slant pattern's been working all day. Robert Williams, a one-on-one -on -one coverage, but Brian Brennan has the first down for the Browns. Well, you're going to get Brian Brennan matched up on Robert Williams a little quick. You see, Bernie Kosar sets it about five yards, throws a strike, very accurate passer in this range of throwing the ball. You just take that right there, throw the ball in front, move it down in. That's what Bernie Kosar's strength is the fact that he reads defenses so well, gets the ball with the correct guy. Mac is out of there now. And Fontenot comes in for Cleveland on first and ten. Fontenot wide to the left as a receiver. Four receivers set for the Browns. Viner the lone setback. Viner shifting around. The 32 of the Cowboys. Fontenot has the catch at the 20 and down to the 12-yard line. Burton and Bates combine on the tackle, but it's another big gainer for the Browns. Well, you see right there, you're going to see Fontenot right there. Where's the defensive back? He's so far, he does, he's so far off of him, he doesn't even make the picture. Bernie Kosar takes a look out there. Robert Williams, number 23, playing off seven or eight yards. Just take that little easy throw right in front of him. Kosar in the first half snake is nine for nine for 177 yards. Well, if you don't get heat on that young man, like we said, he sees things so well. If you don't get the heat on him, you're in trouble. Kevin Mack checks back in. So it's Mack and Biner in the backfield. Mack with the carry. Mack inside the 10 to the 9. Gary Cobb combines with Ed Tutal Jones on the tackle. A four-yard pickup by Mack. Glad to get Kevin Mack back. Big game last week, and their running game has been questioned this year. And I think one of the reasons their running game hasn't worked very well, Jim, is because the passing game has suffered. Anytime your passing game suffers, your running game's going to suffer. The loss of Bernie Kosar, everybody has problems. How about that graphic right there, Kenny? Last in the league and putting it in the end zone once they're inside the 20. Been terrible inside the 20. We talked to the offensive coaches yesterday. Combination of a lot of different things. Penalties. Kosar says we're just playing horrible inside the 20. Here's the handoff to Mack for very little yardage. Eugene Lockhart clogs the middle. And it'll be a third down play for Cleveland inside the 10. Again, it's that straight ahead running style of the Cleveland offense with those big backs with Kevin Mack and Ernest Biner. Nothing fancy, nothing outside because they're not the type of backs that run outside. They don't have the great speed to get outside. Everything is right at you. Kevin Mack comes out. Gerald McNeil goes in. McNeil and Langhorn to the right. Weathers and Brennan to the left. 
A lot of people up there, Jim. They may be coming after him. Third and four for Bernie Kosar on the Browns. Finer the lone setback. Third and four. Kosar looking right. Pass incomplete at the goal line intended for Reggie Langhorn. Pass incomplete and deflected at the line of scrimmage. That's his first misfire today. Good job of getting penetration by the front people to make Bernie throw the ball before he would like. Putting people in his face. Make him deliver the ball before he wants to. Watch this right here. Watch the pressure from up from the middle. You see known in 73. Here comes Randy White on a twist. They get people in front of him all around him. Make him get rid of the ball before he would like. And they stop him. Straight away 25 yard field goal attempt for the flu ridden Matt Barr. Max Runniger the holder trickery on this field goal attempt. Cleveland takes the lead. With four minutes, 54 seconds left in the second quarter, the Browns lead it 10 to 7. You don't have to buy a sports car to get a five-speed transmission, power steering, AM FM stereo cassette, fuel injected engine, anti-lock rear brakes, six years, 60,000 mile powertrain warranty. How do you get all this for under $10,000? Simple. You buy this newly designed Ford Ranger XLT with all these sports car features, plus a really big trunk. Get up to $500 cash bonus on Ford Ranger, the best-selling compact truck in America. There's only one gene endorsed by the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association. Wrangler Cowboy Cut Jeans. From Old California, Ted Deuce. For those hardy souls who brave the elements in search of the perfect tree, McDonald's has a treat just for you. For a short time, we're serving holiday chicken McNuggets with a festive orange sauce. There are also thick, rich eggnog milkshakes and cool peppermint sundaes. They're just our way of wishing you a joyous season. Your holiday place, McDonald's. DePaul, Georgetown. It's the season premiere of college basketball on CBS Sports, the home of the NCAA championship. Ed, too tall Jones almost got his hands on this one. That's why they put him right over the center, because you got a guy that's six seven, six eight, and he, his job is to get penetration. The way you do that is you first hit the center, try to knock him back a yard, get a yard or two penetration, and then get your hands up. That is amazing to think he has never missed a game or even a practice. God, I played in games I wish he would have missed. <laughs> Matt Barr kicking away. Clack and Burbage back deep for the Cowboys. Burbage has it at the six. Here's the NFC's leading kickoff returner. Not much on this one. 14 yard return for Burbage to the 20 yard line. Timeout on the field with 446 left before the half. The Browns lead it by a field goal. Somebody ordered a knish. Where are you? At the Second Avenue Deli in Manhattan, they recently added something new to the menu. The phone number of their Murata fax machine. The guys say that before they bought the Murata, things were pretty hectic behind the counter. Murata fax machines. I have a very long Christmas shopping list. A whole football team that my career depends on. But my shopping is easy because they let me know exactly what they want. Isotoner gloves for men. I buy isotoners for the big guys and the super fast little guys and everyone in between. <laughs> because isotoners fit them all. So this Christmas, take care of the hands that take care of you <laughs> with isotoner gloves. Way to go, Dan. Thanks a lot. With the designed in sound of a Delco Electronics music system, now the best seat in the house is in your GM car or truck. Delco Electronics, it's who we are. First, Gillette made shaving closer, then made it smoother with Atrium.
Lubra Plus. Its Lubra Smooth Strip glides the razor over your face for Gillette's smoothest shave. The Atropos system. First we made it closer, then we made it smoother. As you NFL followers know, the final two weeks of the regular season, there are a couple of games shifted to Saturday. Next weekend, we will have NFL action on Saturday, beginning with the NFL today at 3.30 Eastern. That will be followed by the Eagles and the Cardinals, two of the top teams from the NFC East. Vern Lundquist and Terry Bradshaw will be on hand from Arizona. That's next Saturday, the Eagles and the Cardinals. Arizona can't be all bad this time of year, huh? Woo. Take your golf clubs with you, Vern and Terry. Ah, the way you play, I'm just going to watch. <laughs> Cowboys now from the 21-yard line, first and 10. Black and Walker out of the eye. Cowboys to throw on first down. It's caught by Clack. That's the same play they scored on. Five-yard pickup to the 25, Minifield and Clancy on the stop, along with Mike Johnson. As you said, Jim, it's the same play that they, they scored on, and what they do is they come out of the eye formation, they fake the walker, you see it right there. That's to hold the linebackers. They get the linebackers a hole in one spot, they slip the full back in there in front of them or behind them. He makes that read. Short, safe pass to call. It scored a touchdown earlier. Clack has now caught four passes here in the first half. A lot of play passes because that defense, those linebackers are very aggressive. They react an awful lot. They're quick and overreact occasionally. Second and five. Martin in motion. Double tight end set for the Cowboys. Here's the carry by Walker. Look at him just fighting his way. First down for Herschel Walker. That is all power on that one. Breaking tackles and picking up the first down, Herschel Walker. Well, it's a counter tray type thing. It's the same thing that Washington, that Washington made uh, made very exciting. Watch these two people. Watch the guard and the tackle on the left hand side right here. There's a little counter step. The guard and the tackle both pull to their right. Herschel block. Herschel Walker's responsibility is to cut off either the tackle's block or the guard's block. First and ten Cowboys from their 33 yard line. Three minutes and 20 seconds before the half. Walker and Todd Fowler split behind Palour. Chandler in motion. Hand off, left side. Walker to the 40, 41 yard line. I think the important thing here is the first down plays. They're getting good first down plays. They had the play pass on the first series, hit Clack out in the flat, create short yardage situations. This time they get a seven or an eight yard run out of Herschel Walker, creating another short yardage situation, and this keeps the Cleveland defense off balance. You see Kevin Sweeney on the sidelines, Danny White in the sweater on the sidelines, helping out as well. Of course, he's on the injured reserve list is 36 year old Danny White. Well, we had a great talk with him yesterday, and he would like one more shot with this ball club. He would like the opportunity to say, hey, here's your ball club in 1979. Go and win with it. Landry says he'll most Sorry, likely anyway. be back. Second and two, Walker picks up the first down to the 46-yard line. Brought down by Clifford Charlton, the rookie out of Florida. First down for the Cowboys. Two minutes, 15 seconds left. Cowboys not in any hurry to get another playoff before the two-minute warning. Well, there's Danny White. We started talking about him, and I really had a nice conversation with him yesterday, and I really feel for him. He, he wants to play badly. Do you think he should come back? Uh, I'm not sure that I think he should come back. I know that he wants to come back. We'll be right back. It takes time to get your gal to see the light. It takes time. It isn't always love at sight. From the voice little glance, still she's ready for romance. Remember, little man, it takes time. It takes time to make the coffee boy go late. It takes time to get your gas set the date. From the voice moonlit wall, till you get the baby talk. The Elegance little Collection man, from Citizen. Time. Yeah. The event, the prestigious black and white ball. The place, the cultural heart of Northern California's wine country. And the wine served. Why, Cribari, of course. Wines of tradition. In 1859, Isaac Cook created a great American champagne to launch the great American clipper ships. Today, people are still launching celebrations with Cook's Imperial American Champagne. <laughs> The Ford Mustang LX Convertible. 
With its impressive list of standard features, it's just what the doctor ordered. Open up and say, ah. Now get a $400 cash bonus on specially equipped Ford Mustang. Next Sunday, we'll have a doubleheader for you. The NFL today, of course, starts it off at 12.30 Eastern. The Cowboys and the Redskins, or Detroit and Chicago in the early game. And then it's a big matchup out in the NFC West. 49ers and the Saints. A lot of will be riding on that game for sure. Next Sunday, Mr. Art Modell. Very oh, he's been, uh, he's been great to, since we've been here. They've been over backwards to help our, to help our crew. Any, anything that we've needed from the Cleveland Browns, uh, he's seen that we get it, and it's, it's been a pleasure working with him. Dallas, first and ten from its 46-yard line. On first down, Pelour has the reception to Walker. Walker is stopped after a seven-yard gain in Cleveland territory. Mike Johnson on the tackle. Dallas will have to work against the clock now. The Cowboys, having utilized one of their timeouts inside the 10, will work with two timeouts. Of course, coming up at halftime, Brent Irvin Dick will have scores and highlights from around the league. Plus, Dick will have uh, the story of a player and a position that's often overlooked the center position. And the great one from the Colts, Mr. Ray Donaldson, the all pro center for the Colts. With Clack and Walker in the backfield. Palour setting up a screen to Clack. And Clack spins loose. He gets out of bounds. Saved a lot of time on that and picked up a first down as well. Nice piece of running by Daryl Clack. Good balance by Clack to get the first down. They're going to take a good hard look at Daryl Clack. They're going to use a lot of receivers today and evaluate this team for next year for the 1989 season. Their success they're having on this particular drive, Jim, I think is all predicated on the fact that they're getting good first down plays. They're creating those short yardage situations, which enables them to do the draws and the screens and the things that they're doing. And I think they have Cleveland's defense off balance a little bit. Darrell Clack has, again, five receptions. Today, he had only seven on the entire season coming in. First and ten from the 41 of the Browns. Out of the shotgun, Clack and Walker. And the play is whistled dead. Looks like a delay of game penalty. Delay of game. Offense. Cowboys take too much time bringing the plays in, and this is what's happened inside the 10 today. And again, it happened on two occasions last week when they were taking on the Houston Oilers. Well, you have to get them in as quick as possible so that the quarterback, and most quarterbacks in systems where they send in the plays from the sidelines, they have the ability to change that play if they would like. They have that kind of flexibility. The earlier you can get the guy the play, the more time that he has to get up to the line of scrimmage, take a look at the defense, and make any kind of audible or adjustment that he might need. Cleveland brings in some extra defensive backs. Mark Harper, Brian Washington, and Will Hill add to the ranks. Had to call home, did he? We're trying to, uh, well, the rates are cheaper on the weekend, are they? Call not? home. Wife says get a loaf of bread and some milk. Come on home. Ready to go, and the Cowboys again will come out of the shotgun. Pluer flanked by Walker and Black. Under a heavy rush, this pass is overthrown. Burbage was in the area. Burbage one on one coverage with Frank Minifield guarding him. And Pelour just threw that one away with a blitz coming on. Well, miscommunication or an audible at the line that, uh, that evidently the wide receiver didn't pick up. I was watching him. He ran about a 12-yard out route. Pelour throws the ball about 30 yards down the field. Eagles just getting better and better. And Cincinnati steamrolling past San Diego in the first half. Second and 15 with a minute and four before the half. From the shotgun and good protection. Palour's pass incomplete intended for Kelvin Martin, but almost intercepted by Mark Harper.
Well, they come after him with a blitz. You see the linebacker Grayson going there. It's man to man. There's Hanford Dixon, number 29 up top. And here you see number 83 right there, almost intercepted. Good, tight man to man coverage, which you have to have if you're going to blitz the quarterback. First time that Kelvin Martin has been thrown to today. Mark Harper in his third season out of Alcorn State knocked it away. So it's a third and 15 for the Cowboys, 59 seconds before the half. Palour going long. He has a man at the 10, and it's caught by Burbage at the 5. He is ruled down at the 5, Cornell Burbage. That's a bad place to celebrate down there on that end. You get hit in the head with a bone. 41 yards on the pass play. Palour to a sliding Cornell Burbage. Burbage got back up on his feet. He thought he might have scored. He wasn't sure he had been down by one of the Brown defenders. Well, there's Clancy 91. You see the pressure, which there isn't very much. Man-to-man -man coverage. He throws the ball up, and it's a great adjustment. Watch the adjustment. He has to come inside three or four yards and a diving catch. Nice adjustment on the ball by Burbage. And like we said, you celebrate on that dog end down there. You get hit in the head with a bone. Here they come. Here, here they come. Might be more in a bone. Better get out of there. Throw it right over Hanford Dixon. Cornell Burbage with his first reception of the season. Picks up 41 yards on a third and 15 play. Dallas will have it first and goal from the five. The Cowboys have taken a timeout. Their customary timeout inside the 10, so it seems. Yeah, and you know you hate to see that because they're awfully important in any place in the field, but especially down there. Here you see the catch again. You see Burbage, watch the adjustment. He's on the sidelines and he has to come in and slide about three or four yards for the play. And the great receivers have to adjust to the balls that aren't thrown perfect. You know, I'm not so sure he wasn't back up on his feet before he had been down, Kenny. That could have been a touchdown. Maybe we get another look at it. On first and goal, play action fake. Here's the pass. Folsom touchdown, Dallas. Steve Folsom, the backup tight end. And the Cowboys take the lead. Well, a nice, a, a nice play call down here. Last time they were down in this particular part of the field, Jim, they ran Walker up the middle. They ran straight ahead with a dive type play. Instead, here they bring the tight end across in motion. They're going to give a little play fake in the middle. There it is right there to Walker. That's what they ran last time down there. Everybody has to respect Herschel Walker. Tight end slips in behind it. Steve Folsom's eighth catch of the season, his second touchdown, and the Cowboys lead it with 41 seconds before the intermission. Good call against a real active group of linebackers like Eddie Johnson, Mike Johnson, and those people. Ruzik with the extra point attempt, and it's good. That was a good fake by Palour. And you know, it was set up well because, as we said, last time they were down on the five-yard line, they hit up in the middle on first down with Walker, and he kind of sets that up right there. Consider that Dallas had scored two touchdowns all season in the second quarter. That's two touchdowns in 13 tries. And today they've scored two touchdowns in the second quarter. They've equaled that today. Yeah, they've done it uh, the hard way because they penalized themselves on offense and on defense. They've played through penalties and they've got the ball down there. Pelour has made the big plays when he's had to. He's throwing for a high percentage today. His receivers are doing a good job of coming up with the big plays. And you give a team life like this. I mean, there's such a fine line between uh, a 2-11 and 11 team and a team like this that uh, you, you give anybody life. Uh, it can be tough. Cowboys a team with nine consecutive losses and Cleveland certainly the team right now with a lot riding on this contest eight and five on the season and the wild card chase not totally ruled out of the divisional race but really it's a there's so many possibilities at this point Kenny it's almost scientific you have to get down into so many variables to try to figure it out at this point. I tell you, Jim, it was a lot easier as a player for me. You just go out and play whoever they threw out there on the field and beat them and let somebody else keep up with the standings, but there, there's exactly what you're talking about. And one thing's for certain, the Browns, if they win their final three games, they will be in the playoffs as at least a wild card team. Again, it's a long shot that they could overtake the Bengals by the end of the season in three weeks. From a player's standpoint, uh, the players really they know what they have to do but they don't they won't keep up with all the scenarios they won't keep up with all the variables that it would take to get in the playoffs what the players do is they just say put a team out there let us go win and you guys figure out the standings Cincinnati with a win today against San Diego assures itself of at least a wild card if 
they can beat the Chargers. Squib kick by Ruzik. And it's picked up by, I believe, Sam Clancy. Sam Clancy it is, the defensive lineman, returns it past the 35 to the 37-yard line. Bernie Kosar, 9 for 10, both of the quarterbacks with impressive numbers in the first half. 9 for 10, 177 yards. Belure has thrown for two touchdowns on the other end. Houston and Cleveland will meet in the final game of the regular season right here at Cleveland Stadium, and you have to think that will be a very important contest. Could have bearings as to who will host the wild card game. With four receivers in 36 seconds, Kosar's throwing over the head of Langhorn. Everson Walls was in the area. A little bumping going on, but it may have been Langhorn who hit Everson Walls. Well, the crowd wants interference, but they're not going to get it. The, the, the official says that the ball was overhead, not a catchable ball, and that's the call. Thirty seconds remaining. Well, they're certainly not going to sit on the ball right here with only thirty seconds left, as evidenced by that play. They're going to try to get something out of it. Collectively, the quarterbacks 21 for 26, 310 yards. In the cold, Kozar's pass caught by Brennan at the 45. Take shakes a loose. Out. Get a timeout. Stop the clock. Snake, he is right by the first down yardage marker at the 47 yard line. Which is probably going to be a break for Cleveland, Jim, because they're going to stop the clock and take a real close look at this. And that, well, they're going to give him a first down. They are indeed going to give him the first down. I thought they might measure as well, but it's a first down for the Browns. They've already moved the chains. Here's the pass play across the middle. Bernie, you have to like to wait, watch Bernie play. The ball comes from every conceivable angle that you can think of. Sometimes he's over the top. Sometimes he's sidearm. Sometimes he's three-quarter. It really doesn't matter how he delivers the ball. They just seem to keep moving the chains. Again, Brian Brennan had held all of Boston College receiving records and they were later broken by the Cowboys Kelvin Martin at Boston College. Watch Bernie, watch where he throws the ball. He's sliding backwards with his right foot. He throws a, he throws a sidearm strike to Brennan, a, a good possession type player that's very good against zone type coverage because he runs good precise routes and he under, understands where the linebackers are. But Bernie's really fun to watch because like I said, you never know where the ball's coming from out of there. So now we have 20 seconds remaining in the first half. Dallas leads it 14 to 10. Bernie's got one leg back. This is customary. Here comes a sack by the Cowboys, Gary Cobb. Coes are cornered by Cobb. And it's a big loss. And the Browns have to utilize another timeout with 16 seconds remaining. Well, here it is. They get pressure on Bernie, and the way they do it is they bring the linebackers. You're going to see Gary Cobb, number 59. You see him coming from the left part of your screen. He's on Bernie before he has time to set up and take a look at what's going on down there. He had no chance. Kenny, let's check some of the scores now from around the league on the sports wire. Tampa Bay leading Buffalo in a surprise. Vinny Testaverde has the touchdown in that game with a four-yard run. Well, you always think about teams like Buffalo if they're playing well, if spot the playoffs, and you wonder how they're playing this week, if they've got all their people in or not. Colts are a game back of Cleveland as far as the AFC wildcard picture. A very important game for Indianapolis in the East. Very important game for Seattle in the, in the Western Division. They're all bunched up with Denver and uh, Oakland. And New, sorry, Los Angeles. And, and New England has a 7-6 and six record. Absolutely. Uh, San Francisco is uh, putting the heat on uh, the New Orleans Saints and the in the Western Division of the NFC. Dallas fans thought this might be the day that Green Bay would win, opening the way for Troy Aikman, but it's all Lions in the first half. 16 seconds before the half. Kozar flushed out of the pocket. Throws on the right side, complete to McNeil. He gets up and out of bounds with nine seconds left. Well, good job, Bad McNeil, of knowing where the sidelines is located, knowing he's running short of times. Get out of bounds and stop the clock and, and have one more shot to do something, maybe a Hail Mary. Gerald McNeil. Nine seconds left. Marty Schottenheimer will bring McNeil out and send Clarence Weathers back in. There's proof that the little guy can play. Guy that Absolutely. Will, guy's not big as a hole handle, and he's back there returning punts and kickoffs and catching the ball, and little guys can play too. 
Nine seconds left, third and 12 for the Browns. Good rush by the Cowboys, and again, Kozar goes down. Kozar goes down as he is wrapped up by Mark Whalen. Will play in the Dome in Houston. Tampa Bay over the Buffalo Bills. And Cincinnati is keeping an eye on Buffalo. Should Buffalo lose today and the Bengals win, Cincinnati would have, at this point, the home field advantage in the AFC. There's Herschel Walker on the carry for a little game. And that's awfully important to play at home, as evidence here with this type of crowd or in Cincinnati, the same type of crowd. And I, and I think the home field advantage varies from stadium to stadium based on whether it's outside with a group of people like here or inside in, the, in a dome stadium. I don't think home field advantage is as much as, say, here or in Cincinnati. No, Buffalo. Buffalo is very good. You bet. Those, we were up there earlier in the year, and those fans are just like the ones here. Will Hill and Mark Harper, two extra defensive backs, come in for Cleveland on third and six. Dallas with a four-receiver set, one setback. It's Herschel Walker. Palour is under center. Five a lot, lot of people coming up. Palour throws incomplete. Intended for Kelvin Martin at the 27-yard line. Harper on the coverage. Well, if you're playing defense, safety, here's what you're looking at. Palour back there. They're trying to get an out route, route to Martin out here. But the little bit of pressure that the defensive line gets Makes Pelour have to unload the ball a little sooner. Throws the ball too far out front. Wonder if Dallas would try any trickery at this point. Uh, with a four-point lead at midfield, I, I don't think so. From the 40-yard line, Mike Saxon in. He will boot it away. Big high kick. Will hit inside the 10, inside the 5, in fact, but takes the hop into the end zone. Saxon is very efficient. And kicking it inside the 20. That time, the hop took it into the end zone for a touchback. Blue Diamond Almond Growers are giving away the farm. See, Americans have been so good about buying a can a week of Blue Diamond Almonds, we're saying thanks with Blue Diamond's Farm Giveaway Sweepstakes. First prize, a GMC Truck Sierra pickup. Grand prize, a 10-acre California almond orchard or 50,000 cash. For details, see Sunday papers December 4th and watch out for Blue Diamond store displays. A can a week is all we ask. Wait for something good to happen. Make it happen with the clean, masculine scent of English leather cologne. Some guys have what others want. Some guys have it all. English leather. Some guys have it all. Cindy Williams is going undercover, but Marky Polis ah! has to teach her a few <gasps> tricks. Do what I do. Watch my move. It's a real working relationship. Tricks of the trade, Tuesday. The frigid air around... Cleveland Stadium, packed house here where the Cowboys lead Cleveland by the score of 14 to 10. Browns have the football for the first time in the second half. What do you expect we'll see out of the Browns offense any different from the first half, Kenny? I don't think we'll see much different. I think the running game will be the same. I think they're going to have to throw the ball a little bit more. The success they've had has been Bernie Kosar connecting on the outside people. It opens up in the I formation. Mack the fullback, Biner the tailback. Biner gets the call. And Viner picks up four yards. In the first half, because Mack went out for a large part of the first quarter, they did not run any consistent 
rushing attack with one back. No, they don't seem to really have a consistent rushing attack with the back that they have, but I really don't think that's the way to promise land. I think the way for them is to get that offensive line to protect Kosar, use a real short, quick rhythm-type passing game, and throw the ball. Weathers to the left, Langhorn to the right, Biner on a wing on the right side. It's Mack in the backfield. Here's Kevin Mack. Stuffed at the line of scrimmage by Kevin Brooks. Maybe a gain of one. There are some excellent numbers for the Browns when Kevin Mack goes over 100 yards. Well, you see these people in here, they've been moving around an awful lot. And the reason they move around up there is to is, is to just is destroy the blocking combinations. Is try to make, confuse the guards and the centers so that they don't block the correct guy to try to shut down the running game. Third and six. Manny Hendricks and Ron Francis joined the secondary for Dallas. Four receivers for the Browns. Passed by Kozar, caught by Brennan. First down, Browns. Well, that's where their success was in the first half, Jim, and I think that's exactly what they have to do now. But I don't think they should do it on the on the downs when everybody in the stadium knows you're going to throw the ball. I think they have to throw the ball on first down, second down. Ten-yard completion. Kozar. Look How about at, this technique? Look Kenny? at that stance. Well, I don't know. But I'll tell you what, he, he delivers the ball on time and to the right guy. And like we said earlier, the reason he's cockeyed under there is to get him out from under the center as quick as possible. Was that ever a problem for you? It can be a problem with any quarterback if you hang around in there too long because pulling guards and people stepping back on pass protection can get on your feet. First and 10, Kosar to throw. Now flushed out to the right side, throws it away, incomplete. In the area of Ozzy Newsom, who has not caught a pass today, Newsom has a streak of 140 consecutive games with a reception. He has not caught one to this point. Well, you talk about great tight ends. I think you have to mention him along with the Mike Ditkas and the Dave Caspers and the Kellen Winslows and John Mackey's and people like that. Ozzy Newsom is just a great, great football player. Has been for an awful long time, and who knows? I think he may be with this Browns organization in another capacity before long. And your coach at Alabama, Bear Bryant, said he was the best end he ever coached. Great player. Second and ten for Cleveland. Miner and Mack in the backfield. Long cadence for Kozar. Throws at the Mack incomplete. Bates, Lockhart, and Burton were all over there to converge on Mack should he have caught it. Third and ten will be the next play for the Browns. Well, that's Bernie's outlet. Is a guy standing over there. He's going to get the pressure. He's looking downfield, looking downfield. He can't see anybody, and this is an outlet just to get rid of the ball so that you don't suffer the sack. The right thing to do. This is a situation that they don't want to be in. It's not the ideal situation to throw the football. It's to throw the football when you have to, as opposed to when you want to. Predictable situations will get you in trouble. Eight minutes and 18 seconds left in the third quarter with the Cowboys leading 14 to 10. Four receivers in the game for Kosar. He stays under center. Throws long to McNeil at the 40, at the 30, at the 20, and out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. However, a flag is down in the backfield of the Browns. A 51-yard hookup from Kosar to Gerald McNeil. But it's coming back. Kosar with his hands on his hips and dismay as this one will be coming back. Illegal hands to the face. Number 77 offense, still third down. Ricky Bolden. Well, you hate that. Nobody hates it any worse than Ricky Bolin. He steps in for Williams with a sore shoulder, and he gets the holding penalty. See if we can see it right here. Let's see if we can spot Ricky Bolin. Yeah, he's got the hand on the outside, number 73, Danny Noonan. You have to keep those hands on the inside of the plane of the body. He got his right arm on the outside, and he gets caught. Now it's third and 20. Four receivers. Liner in the backfield. Kozar goes long down the left side, and there's no one there. Except for Robert Williams of the Dallas Cowboys. 
Well, you see Clarence Weathers right there. I was watching him. He ran about a 10 or a 12 yard out. Bernie threw the ball 35, 40 yards down the field. Whether or not it was an audible, it's hard to say, but there was miscommunication between that man right there, Weathers, and the quarterback, Bernie Kosar. Max Runniger is the punter for Cleveland. With Kelvin Martin of the Cowboys back to receive the punt at his 35. His first punt of the day for Runniger. Doesn't catch it all. Martin tries to make the catch. He fumbles, but is picked up by his teammate Robert Williams. That ball just went clear through his arms. And it was retrieved by Robert Williams, a near turnover for the Cowboys, who have the football and the lead midway through the third quarter. There is a flag down in the area of where Martin was trying to make the catch on the punt. I saw no fair catch indication. Summit now being held. Marty's gonna, Marty's gonna do a little officiating. Give him as much, give him a hand. Here's a replay of it. It looks like the ball just goes completely through his arms. He doesn't even slow it down. Looks like he thought it was gonna be contact. I don't think he touched the ball. Close to a turnover. Mark Harper was right in his face as he attempted to make the catch. Mark Harper of Cleveland. Absolutely not. Jerry Seaman is the referee. Well, Dave you know, you... Kamansky is the replay official today. And the communicator is Jim Heffernan. Well, you have to give the guy that's receiving the ball, you have to give him room to at least make the catch. And it was awfully crowded then, close together, and that may be what they're looking at. There was no infraction on the play because the ball had hit the ground prior to the contact. First down. So the Cowboys have the football. First and 10 at their own 33 yard line. Well, if you're a Cleveland Brown, you've got an awful lot riding on this game, and they've got to get in gear. Their defense needs to make a big play. If you thought you had to give up comfort to get a close shave, Norelco says, think again. Their revolutionary shaving system shaves skin close in a way that's incredibly comfortable. As the hair enters the chamber, the patented lift and cut system lifts each hair and holds it a split second before... Scoring in the third quarter, but the Cowboys lead it over Cleveland. 14 to 10, impressive numbers by Steve Pelour. 12 for 17, 133 yards and two touchdowns. Walker and Fowler in the backfield. Dallas operating out of the pro set. Pelour throwing on first down, a completion to Ray Alexander. Looks like he has the first down for Dallas. He does at the 44 and 11 yard gain. And today, Pelour silencing some of the critics about the Cowboys quarterback problem. Well, there's been a lot of critics surrounding that position. A lot of people talking about it, thinking that uh, Danny, Danny White's best days are behind him. Pelour has made the mistakes down in the scoring territory and coming out of his own territory. And a lot of talk. A lot of people think that they need some new blood at that position, a new fire, somebody to build around, a Troy Aikman type player, possibly. Todd Fowler and Walker in the eye on first and ten. Walker gets the carry and picks up two yards to the 46-yard line. I tell you what, if you're a Cleveland Brown, somebody has to make a play. You have to look for somebody. Uh, Bernie Kosar made the play on offense a minute ago, but they get the penalty. Now the defense on the field. Somebody's got to come up with a big turnover. They've got too much riding on the game. They're struggling for a wild card berth. Uh, winning division is remote. But they're not making any plays. They seem to just be kind of really lethargic out there. And somebody's got to step forward and do something. Walker, 17 carries for 86 yards. Cowboys at their 45-yard line. Six and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Second and nine for Dallas. Clack and Walker split behind Pelour. Dallas out of the pro set. Pelour to throw. Ball is batted down. Batted down, incomplete at the line of scrimmage. Mike Johnson, Clay Matthews in the area. May have been Sam Clancy. 
Well, it's going to be Sam Clancy, number 91. You look right there on your screen. That's where the pressure's going to come from. There's Clancy down below. Matthews from the outside. That's the kind of pressure that they have to have. Those are the kind of plays that the defense has to step forward and make. Now the crowd begins to chant, urging on this dog defense of Cleveland on third and ten. Make it third and nine for Dallas. Pelour going long to Everett Gay. He has the catch at the 32-yard line. Everett Gay with a 23-yard hookup with Steve Pelour. Well, it's a nice corner route. You're going to see it on the left-hand side of your screen here. It's a corner route to Everett Gay, number 80, and the ball couldn't be thrown any perfect, more perfect than this right here. It all starts with the great pass protection. Watch where the ball's delivered. The only guy that can come up that is Gay. Nice throw, nice catch. Everett Gay caught that over his former college teammate at the University of Texas, Stephen Braggs. Another one of the young receivers that Tom Landry's taking a look at to evaluate this team for next year. Dallas in the eye. Now shifting around Fowler and Walker. First and 10 Dallas from the Cleveland 32. Audible. And a mix up. Pelour will tuck it in and pick up a yard. It was so loud down there. Ray Alexander, the receiver, wide to the left side, raised his hands up and said, Hey, I can't hear you on this. See, you can tell us an audible. Watch the guys raise up. Watch the guys raise up and they will look in and so they can hear. They look in there to try to hear something with this kind of crowd noise. This is the thing that can happen an awful lot is you're going to have busted plays because you can't hear. Now inside of five minutes of the third quarter, Dallas leading Cleveland 14 to 10. Jim Nance along with Ken Stabler from Cleveland Stadium. Second down to nine for the Cowboys. Darrell Flack, the fullback. Walker, the halfback. Play action fake to Walker. Pelour now rolling out, throwing incomplete. Intended for the tight end, Thornton Chandler at the 30-yard line. Mike Johnson in on the coverage. Marlon Jones put on some pressure for Pelour. Well, the play fake was second down and nine or ten to go. I don't agree with because you don't, you're not going to run the ball. You're going to throw the ball. So why reverse out of there? And why try to play fake the ball? Because you're not going to run it. You're going to throw the ball. Just drop straight back out of there, and that will help the pass protection. Dallas has had success as we see the Bills have scored on a safety to cut that lead of Tampa Bay's down to ten to two. Five for eight on third down plays. This is third and nine out of the shotgun. Pelour going long for Michael Irvin. Incomplete over his head. And a flag comes down. Frank Minifield was on the coverage of Michael Irvin. How did you see that one, Kenny? Well, I think Minifield had good coverage. He had him covered. And he was draped all over him, but he wasn't a foul. He was just in, in position to make the play on the ball. I think it's good coverage. Could it possibly? Maybe it's, I think it offensive? might be offense, yes. Yep. That'll go against Michael Irvin, and the penalty might back Dallas up out of field goal range. Could be a big play right there. Pass interference, number 88 offense, penalty decline, fourth down. What do you think of that now? You. You refuse the penalty. You can bring Ruzek out now. First, let's take a look at the infraction. Offensive interference on Michael Irvin. All right, we're going to catch the tail end of it right there. See the right arm? See Michael Irvin's right arm hits Minifield across the three and across the one. Minifield knows it, and he pleads to the ref and gets the call. You know, there is so much wind swirling around. Dallas is not going to attempt the field goal. It would have been a 48-yard field goal attempt, but Landry's going to bypass that. And bring in Mike Saxon. Dallas moving up on the penalty list. And Mike Saxon will try the pooch punt. But instead, someone jumped, and the Cowboys, of course, trying to lure the Browns offside. False start offense. Well, it's going to be on the left-hand side of your screens where everything starts taking place. So they call false start on Dallas from a punt tight. There you see the, the false start right there, which draws them off sides. 
Tom Landry's going to. Tom's giving his special teams people a hard go. Prior to the snap, offense. Bill Bates and Daryl Clack were moving around on that left side of the line. Cowboys in punt formation. That's the tenth penalty of the game against the Cowboys. Well, their, their idea here is we're going to kick them in the hole. We've stopped their offense on the last three or four series of downs. Let's kick them in the hole and play defense and with our four-point lead and go from there. Saxon standing right at midfield. And again, a whistle. Late third quarter. Cowboys leading it 14 to 10. This place is notorious for treacherous wind conditions coming off of Lake Erie right out of this end zone that the Cowboys are driving toward. What did you think of the decision, though, to bypass a 48-yard field goal attempt? It's not that windy today. No, it's not. You look at the flags, you look at the ribbons on top of the post, the duration that they're kicking, and they're straight down. Very still. Saxon kicks it into the end zone. So the Browns will have it at the 20. You can see very little wind here at all. Cleveland will take it over after the touchback. Dean Lockhart had a few things to say about the dog bones that are being thrown out of the dog pound. Well, he's no dummy, though. You watch. He doesn't like the dog bones. He breaks it. He stomps it. <laughs> and now get the heck out of there. There he goes. Don't stay around down there. think of the decision for the Cowboys they netted only 11 yards from the original line of scrimmage had they missed the field goal attempt that good, they never tried good point Jim no wind on the top of the flags out there you're a 2 and 11 ball club let's kick it big difference between the four point lead and seven Kozar to throw Weathers has it at the 37 he beats Robert Williams on the play first down Cleveland well, that gets him out of the hole. You can't throw the ball any better than that. The ball was in the air. The ball was in the air before Weathers ever comes out of his move. You can't see the receiver here. All you're going to be able to see is Bernie Kosar releasing the ball. All starts with great pass protection. They get it. He's already out of his move. He didn't even see the ball. He turns around. There it is. That's great, great timing. Up to the offense now to make the big plays that Bernie Kosar made one last series but had the penalty. Weathers picks up 19 on the play. First down for the Browns. And with Mac Malone setback by Kozar throws. And there's Ozzie Newsom. Ozzie. He keeps the streak alive. Great. You bet. 141 consecutive games with at least one reception. And they love Ozzie Newsom in Cleveland. Well, like I said earlier, if you start talking about tight ends, you have to you have to mention this guy's name along with the Mike Gibson, and Kelly Winslow, John Mackey, Casper. That guy right there is a wonderful, great football player. Bernie Kosar, his strength is seeing things. He sees he sees a defense, spots Ozzie out there, gets him his catch. Good catch too. Bernie's taking the game in his hands now. He has to make the play. Everybody looks to these two guys, veteran player and Newsom. They got to get it done. They are chanting, ah, Z, ah, Z. As Ozzy lands far enough for the first down. Pickup of 10 on the play. First down, Cleveland at its own 49-yard line. What a great guy he is. A lot of people think that you may see him in the front office of Cleveland one day. Outstanding member of the community here as well, Ozzy Newsom. Second all-time longest streak, consecutive games to Steve Largent. Picks up another Browns first down. Back in the backfield, Biner lined up as a receiver wide to the right. Langhorn slot right, Weathers on the left. Burton forces Kozar out of the pocket, a flag down as the pass is dropped by... Reggie Langhorn. Again against the Browns. Sixth penalty of the day against Cleveland. Monarch Marty Schottenheimer brings in Brian Brennan for the next play. 
Illegal hands to the face. Number 63 offense, still first down. Cody Risen. Well, they catch Cody Risen and talk to Doug Deacon, a great offensive lineman doing some radio work here in town. He says he, they, swapped, uh, they swapped stories. He taught Cody Risen how to hold, and Cody Risen, who has three young daughters, taught uh, Deacon how to handle the pollock with his daughters. First and 20 after the penalty. Two minutes and 40 seconds left in the third quarter. Here comes Gary Cobb forcing Kozar. Oh, and Kozar is down on the field. Yeah, it's, and he, he hits him on his throwing arm, uh, very similar to the way that he was injured uh, weeks ago. Boy, everybody uh, holds their breath when this guy gets hit like that. Kozar is backed up by Don Strock. As Gary Danielson and Mike Pagel both have been injured trying to fill in for Kozar earlier in the season. They're both on injured reserve. Watch where he gets hit. When his arm is back, see his arm is back. They get him when he's trying to go forward. That's the way that he hurt his arm originally. You have to hold your breath every time he goes down. He has to, they have to have him in order to make the playoffs. Second and 20, Biner lines up wide to the left side. Mac the lone setback. Brennan and Langhorn line up on the right. Under pressure, the pass caught by Langhorn at the 45. Short gain for Cleveland. Pickup of six, third and long coming up. Bill Bates had the first hit on Reggie Langhorn. Checking the sports wire. Giants now 17 in front of the Cardinals. Cardinals have the venture east the second week in a row. Last week, Philadelphia. This week, New York. And Washington loses. The Redskins are eliminated from the playoffs. Any chance of the playoffs? Don Strock standing on the sidelines. Backup player to Ernie, uh, Ernie Kosar and Bernie Kosar. It's good to have an experienced quarterback like Strock to help out your young players. Just ask Dan Marino. Third and 14. Kosar going to Clarence Weathers. And this will be interference. No doubt about it. Interference on Ron Francis of the Cowboys. Clarence Weathers never had a chance. First down. Francis just wrapped them up early. And Cleveland's inside the Cowboys 30 at the 28-yard line. Well, here's the tail end of it. You see Weathers is out on the ball, both going for the ball. There's the left arm. It comes across the shoulder. Prior to the ball getting there, no doubt about it. First and 10 for the Browns at the 28-yard line. Now lined up in the eye. Here's the give to Viner. Viner picks up five yards on the carry to the 23-yard line. You get down in this part of the, the part of the field, in this territory, Jim, as a quarterback, once you get to the 20-yard line, 15-yard line, you start expecting man-to-man -man type defenses and try to get the matchups that you want. Uh, Kenny, number 42, is checked in for Cleveland. Tim Manoa, and he was sorry to hear you were going to be here this week. Oh, yeah? Why's that? He's afraid of snakes. Afraid of snakes? I'm a friendly one, though. I'm, I'm a friendly one. I'm, no problem. He's too big anyway. <laughs> It's Manoa, the lone setback. Viner on a wing, now set in motion. On second and five, here's Tim Manoa. Tell you, one more run into that defensive front. He might be afraid of that Cowboy defensive line as well. <laughs> well, you know, they run the ball up in there with Manoa and the straight-ahead type stuff. And their, their success has been throwing the football, you know. And you hate to sit up here and second-guess because I've been in that situation down there. But you have to question the fact of taking the ball Running the ball up in there with second down and five, and then you have the third down obvious passing situation. Their success has been Bernie Kosar throwing the football, and I think that's what they should do. Tim Manoa, the man from Tonga, checks out. Cleveland on third and four has four receivers in the game. Closing seconds of the third quarter. Dallas may have jumped. No flag. Pass is caught. Caught by Brennan for a first down. Their possession receiver. He just goes up and hooks it up. They'll take that for the first down when they're giving them that much room. Final seconds of the third quarter. This crowd thought there was going to be an offsides encroachment penalty against the Cowboys. There was no flag, but it doesn't matter because Brennan picks up the first down at the 14-yard line. That's 
the end of the third quarter with the score, Dallas 14, Cleveland 10. We now pause for a word from your local station. This is CBS. Scandinavian is still celebrating the grand opening of our newest health spa in Canton. And right now in celebration, you can join any Scandinavian for only $199 for one full year. That's right, only $199 for one year at any Scandinavian. And there's more. Just visit our grand opening in Canton for your chance to win a 1989 Chevrolet or one of hundreds of other fabulous prizes and take advantage of a special grand opening price at our newest Scandinavian in Canton. You don't have to buy any equipment to turn your phones into a smart business phone system because with this button and this one, you can tap into the smart business phone system from Ohio Bell. You can make intercom calls. Al speaking. Oh, hi, Fred. Yeah, let me transfer you over to Diane. Conference calls. Hello. Hi, Al. Hi, Fred. Diane. You can do everything those expensive phone systems can do. So before you go out and buy new phones with a lot of buttons, call us about using the ones you already have. Ford represents quality and performance. Ford Ranger is the number one selling compact pickup in America. Ford F-Series is the number one selling full-size pickup in America. In fact, five of America's ten best-selling cars and trucks are Ford. I drive a Ford. It represents, in my mind, the quality in its field. Schoolyard Snipers on the next Geraldo tomorrow at 4 on TV8. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Honda, maker of the Civic four-door, Seagram's Coolers, and by AT&T, the right choice. Welcome back to Cleveland Stadium as we enter the fourth quarter of play. Jim Nance along with Ken Stabler. And the Browns trailing the Cowboys 14 to 10, but first and 10 for Cleveland from the Cowboy 14-yard line. Liner in the backfield, but Kozar to throw on first down, incomplete. Intended for Reggie Langhorn at the five. Well, you notice they're down on the dog pound in now, Jim, and that crowd is helping out the offense by being a lot quieter than they are when the opponent's down there so that Bernie can do his audible work. That was intended actually for Herman Fontenot, a running back who they line up as a receiver quite often. Hmm. What do you think that is? <laughs> <laughs> I hesitate to guess, but he's got hand got predictions, hand predictions jerseys on. Yeah, he created a monster, all right. <laughs> Four receivers now for the Browns on second and ten from the 14. Again, they've had trouble scoring touchdowns inside the 20. They're dead last in the NFL in getting it in the end zone inside the 20. Here's the pass. Fontenot, no, oh, the five oh. touchdown. Great play. Fontenot breaks the tackle of Michael Downs and scores the touchdown. Good job by that guy right there of getting rid of the ball under heavy pressure. Watch from the left-hand side of your screen. On the outside, coming clean, nobody on him. He delivers the ball right on target. Great separate effort by Fontenot for the touchdown. Good job by Bernie Kosar to read that, get rid of it. Matt Barr to attempt the extra point. Art Modell watching the play. There's a happy man. on the hole and Barr makes it 17-14 Cleveland back in front for Herman Fontenot his second touchdown of the season his other touchdown had been scored on a blocked punt return this one a 14 yard pass reception breaking the tackles and the dog pound is oh, the happy. dog pound is busted at the seams they don't have enough chain link fence over there to hold that group if they decide to take over. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Cleveland Browns and the National Football League is prohibited. Yes, sir. Uh, we haven't got a horse race. Cleveland takes 
the football 80 yards for the touchdown after the Cowboys had driven to the 31-yard line and again decided to punt instead of go for the field goal. The momentum shifted at that point. No doubt. The momentum shifted at that point. They take it down there. They get the big plays out of Bernie Kosar. Fontenot. Like I said, momentum has changed. Now the defense has to keep it that way. Nine plays it took to cover the 80 yards and over four minutes they used on the clock. And they do it with that underneath possession type passing and they look for those big plays. They run the ball in the middle and I think what they need to do if they're going to get there is what we've been saying is they've got to protect Bernie Kosar, get him in some kind of rhythm of throwing those short things, which he's doing right now, and that's where their success lies. And of course the interference call didn't hurt anything either. Well, the birds are heading south. Now the question is, are the Cowboys after that drive by Cleveland. Will they respond? Take a 2 and 11 ball club that struggled all year long, and then we'll, we'll see how they react to it. Matt Barr's kick comes to Clack at the 10, to the 20, and to the 28 yard line. Darrell Clack. Man down on the field. And it's Herman Fontenot who just scored the touchdown for the Browns. Now he's on his feet with the help of a couple of teammates, and he'll walk off the field. There's the drive for the Browns. It now puts them back in front. 17-14 with 14-52 left in the contest. Bernie Kosar is 17 of 24, 264 yards and two touchdowns. Yeah, there's one of my old teammates. I know it has to be one of them behind. Down play action fake by Palour setting up the long pass. Everett Gay at midfield, and the ball is stripped loose, and it's recovered by Cleveland. Hanford Dixon strips it. Dixon sticks him right, recovers. Well, that's what we were talking about earlier. You have to have some of your guys step forward and make the big play. Hanford Dixon, they call him top dog. He takes it on his shoulders to step in there and make something happen. Really nice play. The timing is terrific between Pelour. Little play fake to hold the linebackers from the right hand part of your screen. You're going to see him coming across right there. Well thrown. Watch Dixon, number 29 from behind. Strips the ball right there. Makes a big play. That's what you have to have out of your great players and great plays. So Cleveland takes over at its own 46 yard line. Mack and Biner. Field. Derek Tennell is in as a tight end replacing Ozzie Newsom on this play. And another flag falls. Dallas has had a pinch it for turning it over in the fourth quarter. Called start prior to the snap. Number 74 offense. Still first down. Paul Farron back up the Browns five yards. Fontenot was shaken up on the kickoff coverage. Yeah, there's the trainers that just strap them up, patch them up, tape them up, put band-aids wherever they need to, and get back out there and get it done. It's an important part of the year, and we need everybody. To embellish that point, Kenny, Dallas is minus 11 now on the season in the takeaway-giveaway ratio in the final quarter. They've lost many games in the fourth quarter. Kozar almost intercepted. Batted in the air, and Ron Burton couldn't quite get there fast enough. Well, there's a lot of pressure, and Bernie Kosar does a good job. He dodges a bullet by not throwing the interception and just gets rid of the ball, but he takes a big chance right here. There's the heavy pressure from the right side. He ducks under it, buys some time, and then takes a chance right there of throwing the ball up in the middle. draw a big crowd in Cleveland this time of year. Second down and 15. Cleveland at its own 41. Kozar's pass is caught. Ozzie. And a flag falls at the end of the play. Ozzie Newsom with the reception near midfield. Nine yards on the play. Eugene Lockhart was defending. 
personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 56, defense, first down. They got the hitting machine on the tail end of that play. Hitting machine got a little overzealous, but here's where Ozzie Newsom is really important. He, he, because of his experience, he knows where those linebackers are. Well, Eugene Lockhart's going to let him know where he's located at that particular time. But Ozzie Newsom knows where those guys are, sits down, knows when to go, when to stop. Exciting player to watch play. They use his experience. I call that a spear, wouldn't you? Without a doubt. I think that was a an ouch. Very good call. 14 minutes and 10 seconds left. Ozzie has 30 receptions now. All 11 seasons in his career after that reception. Cowboys 36. Kevin Mack. Six yard gain. Stopped by Everson Walls. And Cleveland leading 17 to 14 and driving again. Giants now just putting it away against Phoenix. As we check the sports wire, Philadelphia again. Right at the top of the NFC East and trying to continue on and eliminate the Redskins from the playoff picture. If the Redskins lose today, they'll become the seventh Super Bowl champion to fail to make the playoffs the following year. Yeah, I can remember that. Mack and Viner split backfield. Mack with a whistle, and the play is ruled dead. I believe the down clock expired at delay of game coming up against Cleveland. Delay of game prior to the snap offense. Snake, when you guys beat Minnesota 32 to 14 in the Super Bowl, yeah. January of 77, how did you guys come back the next year? We played pretty well, as a matter of fact. We went all the way to the championship game in Denver. I think Denver won the division or a better record than we did. We had to go to uh, Denver and play in the championship game, and they beat us. Uh, a lot of people think that Rob Lytle may have fumbled late in the game and was not called, and as a result, uh, we didn't repeat. One of John Madden's favorite uh, favorite plays, the Rob Lytle fumble. Second and nine for the Browns. Got a man open. Oh, yeah. Weathers. Yeah. One-handed catch and a touchdown. Nothing to it. with the touchdown and Cleveland storms ahead by nine with the extra point to come. What a beautiful one handed grab by Clarence Weathers and it's his first touchdown of the season. Well there's a choreographed celebration right there. Here you're going to get a shot of it. It was a great catch nonchalantly throws a hand out. Bernie Costar puts the ball right on the money. Weathers does a job on Robert Williams. He's beating him like a drum, and he just sticks out the one hand, and then the celebration starts. Extra point by Barr. It's good, and it's a 10-point lead. That ball stuck on his hand like Freddie Belitnikoff used to catch him. Nothing to it. Just hold home. Just throw it out there. I'll go get it. It's a 10-point lead for the Browns with 13 minutes left in the contest. Well, it's Cleveland now with two touchdowns in the fourth quarter to take a 10-point lead. The summary, Kosar, three touchdown passes, over 300 yards for the contest. The Cowboys have been flagged 12 times, and Cleveland leads in total yards, but the important thing, of course, they lead on the scoreboard 24 to 14. What's well, happened here in the fourth quarter? Well, you have to have great plays out of your great players, and Hanford Dixon strips the ball on an obvious first down by Dallas, and then to give the offense the ball, Bernie Kosar makes it big plays. What you have to have, like I said, plays out of your people, and that they're making them. Here's an example of it right here. He throws the ball out. Weathers goes and gets it. He's beating his guy extremely uh, five or six yards and makes the one-hander. You have to have those kind of plays if you're going to keep advancing. Two touchdowns in a two-minute span for Cleveland. And a 10-point lead now with 13 minutes left. Darrell Clack makes the catch at the seven yard line off the kick. He's to the 30. A flag is down. He's to the 40. 
brought down at the 42 yard line. A flag, however, is on the ground at the 26 yard line. Brian Washington made the tackle of Daryl Clack. Weathers and Langhorn, they each have scored touchdowns today on big plays, but Weathers' catch is a memorable one. It's yeah, one to look back at for a long time. That's a highlight film catch. Another penalty against Dallas. on this one snake well you see 55 right there in front of you number 24 obvious uh, obvious infraction hitting him from behind so the Cowboys start to drive at the 16 yard line the pound is raising Kane Walker at the 20 to the 30 as he gets into the secondary. Felix Wright and Brian Washington stopped him. Had he broken one more tackle, Herschel Walker may have made that an 84-yard run. That puts Walker very close to the 100-yard mark. In fact, let's give it to him. There's 100 yards on the day for Herschel Walker. 18 carries, 100 yards. His fourth 100-yard effort of the season. from the 30. Walker the lone setback. Martin in motion. Walker on the carry again. A right tackle and he scoots ahead for four yards. Mike Johnson makes the tackle. Danny White right by Landry's side. Final score New England over Seattle. And the Patriots another one of those teams that hovering around that mark that Cleveland's looking at as far as wild card playoff spots. Possibly lost for Seattle as far as the West picture. Another one here in Indianapolis, the 31 21 over Miami. Dallas drops out of the eye. Fowler and Walker in the backfield with Martin in motion. Irvin, a receiver on the left side. Along with Everett Gay, here's the pass. Martin has it outside the 40, 43 yard line. Flag down at midfield. Martin had enough for the first down for the Cowboys. One Cleveland player now clapping his hands, indicating it might be against the Cowboys. Illegal hands to the face, number 29 defense. Penalty decline, first down. Hanford Dixon. So that one's against the Browns, and it's a first down for the Cowboys. Still a lot of time left here, Snake. 11 minutes and 14 seconds remaining. Awful lot of time. Down by 10, but you, I, I think you have to consider the the time, and I, I think the running game with Herschel Walker, I think they're going to have to throw the ball. They've been successful throwing the ball, but they've turned it over after the catches. Martin to the right, Everett Gay to the left. Walker gets the pitch left, and he is wrapped up by Clay Matthews. Clay Matthews is playing today with a broken right hand suffered last week against the Redskins. You know, this time of year, Jim, everybody's banged up and beat up out there. You've got Nick's uh, every imaginable kind of injury from knees to shoulders to hands to arms, and all the players know how important it is at this point in time to be able to go out there and play while you're hurt. And guys like this that play for an awful long time, they are able to play hurt. Rubber cast, cast on his right hand. Clay Matthews. Second down for the Cowboys. Second and nine. Kalua out in the flat to the tight end Chandler. Inside Cleveland territory and a first down. Good piece of running for the tight end. He just ran over Frank Minifield and picked up the Dallas first down. Gain of 12 on the play. Dallas now started at its own 16. They've advanced it to the Cleveland 46. Ten minutes. Seven seconds left in the game. The clock is running. Gay to the left. Martin to the right. Walker the lone setback. Chandler in motion. 
Walker on the carry. Good room for Walker. He's at the 30. And he swung around and knocked out of bounds by Felix Wright. First down for the Cowboys after the big gainer. Gain of 20 yards by Walker. Jim, watch the motion man's block. There's the motion man right there going in motion across the formation. Watch his block. You're not going to be able to see it. He kicks out right there on number 57, Matthews, which enables Walker to cut behind him. Nice job of blocking by Chandler Thornton. 21 rushes, 124 yards for Herschel Walker. First and 10 from the 25 of the Browns. Fowler joins Walker in the backfield. Walker gets the carry. He gets no yardage at all. In fact, he's dropped for a two-yard loss. Daryl Sims. Sims, a former first-round pick of the Pittsburgh Steelers out of Wisconsin. And then Pittsburgh gave up on him. He was waived, picked up by this Cleveland team last year during the strike. Now he's found a home back in a Bob Golick at nose tackle. We'll call it a loss of three on the play. Second and 13 for the Cowboys. Nine minutes left in the game. Fowler and Walker. Cowboys out of the pro set. Palour throws for Martin. No good. Over his head incomplete. Dangerous pass for a moment. Mike Johnson was in the area. And at this point down 10, you, you're the Cowboys. you got to put at least three on the board. You need a score. You need two scores yeah, to catch back two, up. Got to come out of here with something. They've got good field position down here. Third down, awfully big play right here. But like you say, they have to come out of here with some points because you have to look at the clock and, it, and time is starting to be their enemy. Next Sunday, doubleheader here on CBS. Cowboys and Redskins. Detroit and Chicago in the early action. NFL today at 12.30 gets it underway. The Saints and the 49ers in the second game of our doubleheader next Sunday. Four receivers for the Cowboys. On third down, the pass to Martin. First down, Dallas. First down at the 12-yard line. That was Michael Irvin helping uh, Martin get on his feet. And Martin with the reception, a gain of 12 yards. Good job by Palou of delivering the ball. He's been doing it all afternoon under extreme pressure. You see people in his face, throws the ball on the outside. You have to keep this throw on the outside, low and outside, exactly where he throws it. They're in business. So the Cowboys first and 10 from the 12-yard line of Cleveland. They stay with Fowler backfield joining Herschel Walker Martin to the right Gay to the left inside handoff Walker inside the five and near the first down pickup of 10 on the play by Herschel Walker how about the hole up the middle on this one snake you bet right there you're going to see the hole right in the middle of the screen right here a huge hole there comes Herschel Walker from the left there's the hole right there behind Nate Newton and once he gets up ahead of steam, here's what you got to deal with. Extremely strong, durable back. Felix Wright finally tackled him at the four. It's second and one for the Cowboys. Walker has 101 yards rushing, more yards rushing than the Cleveland team. Second and one. Pitch left, Walker. Fowler clears the way. Walker walks in. Touchdown, Cowboys. What a lead block by Todd Fowler. Todd Fowler, nice block by Nate Newton, the left guard also. Got to hand it to the Cowboys. They really responded, driving 84 yards right after Cleveland had back-to-back -back touchdowns. Watch the block over in this area right there, Jim. You're going to see a nice block, as you said, by Fowler. The motion man right there, there's the block. There's Nate Newton, number 61, who hits number 51. He knocks the linebacker, Eddie Johnson, out of the way, and Walker walks in. Seven minutes and 20 seconds left in the contest. Well, if you think a team like Dallas is going to roll over and play dead, they got too much pride. They come from a great deal of tradition behind this team. All these guys have to evaluate themselves and see where they stand with this team. They're playing for the role of spoiler. They're playing for their jobs next year. So we got a horse race. We do indeed. 24-21.
Cleveland's 10 point lead is trimmed to three. McDonald's has something special just for you. For a short time, we're serving holiday chicken McNuggets with a festive orange sauce. There are also thick, rich eggnog milkshakes and cool peppermint sundaes. They're just our way of lighting up the season. Your holiday place, McDonald's. Seven minutes and 20 seconds remaining. Cleveland with a three-point lead over the Cowboys. The Sod Squad. Sod Squad. Out there in force. You know, they call this in polo stomping out the divots. They do that at halftime after three chuckers. Looks like where I've been swinging a nine iron. Uh, th th this is what the golf course looks like after you're done it's with it? It's a mess. <laughs> Your name just went on a list. Can't hit it out of my shadow. Keep them off the grounds. I know better than that. You're trying to set me up for some shots. Look at the scoring drive by the Cowboys. Cannot emphasize enough the Cowboys responding after the Cleveland team had scored two touchdowns in a two minute span and Dallas driving 84 yards. Get right back into the contest. Stephen Braggs joins Glenn Young back to receive the kick of Ruzik. Ruzik's kick, a short one, comes to Young at the 17. He's got a hole at the 30. Grab by one arm. Manny Hendricks makes the tackle for the Cowboys. Manny Hendricks may have saved the day for the Cowboys for the moment. Manny Hendricks, a former basketball player out of the University of Utah. And now is a backup cornerback for the Cowboys. Almost breaks this, but what this does, it gives them good field position. It gets out where they can use a higher percentage of their offense out around the 40-yard line. What Cleveland would like to do, of course, is to maintain control of the ball, and they would like to get some first downs. They'd like to do it running to keep the clock going. Well, they've got their duo in the backfield, Biner and Mack. Good field position to start out. Stay in bounds. Mack goes out of bounds and loses yardage, Kenny. Well, you see, in the huddle, what a quarterback might say to a guy, if you've got an outside run call, if you've got something on the outside, you might say to the back, look at him and say, hey, listen, if you get over there near the sidelines, just get down, stay in bounds, and let the clock spin. Well, he lost two yards, and he stopped the clock. Seven minutes and four seconds remaining. The 49ers have beaten Atlanta. Remember the Falcons had upset the 49ers out on the West Coast earlier this year. 49ers playing extremely well. Adam, not too long ago, Montana's back fairly healthy. Jerry Rice's ankle is much better, and they're playing well. And the Colts advance to eight and six. Tozar is sacked. He is wrapped up by Kevin Brooks. That's the fourth sack of the day for the Dallas defense. Well, they flush him out of there. They had six against them last week against Washington. They force him out this time and get the sack, which puts the offense in a, in a tough hole. There's a the pressure right up the middle. It's Lockhart, the middle linebacker, number 56. And once you get Bernie running around with the ball, you got him where you want him. 
Brooks has been struggling with a jammed neck. There's a pain in the neck on that play for Bernie Kosar, I'll tell you that. Well, they got the field position up around the 40 on the kickoff return, and they've wasted that. Now they're looking at third and 20. And four receivers in the game for the Browns. Here comes Danny Noonan. Danny Noonan. Kosar has caved in around the 20-yard line. And that offensive series for the Browns netted a minus 19 yards. Three plays, they lost yards on all three plays. Kenny. That's where it's gonna come from right there. Danny Noonan, number 73, he's gonna beat number 77, Ricky Boland right there. There he is, all over him, not a chance. Danny Noonan in the footsteps of Randy White, footsteps of Bob Lilly, they think he'll be a good long-term tackle. Max Runniger kicks it away to Kelvin Martin. He's going to try the right side. To the 45 yard line, a 10 yard return. Mark Harper on the tackle. The Cowboys have the football and the momentum with six minutes and 10 seconds remaining. Jim Nance, along with Ken Stabler from Cleveland Stadium. Browns lead the Cowboys by a field goal. Cowboys drove 84 yards last time they had the football. Walker scoring the touchdown. Herschel has 24 carries for 134 yards. That is the best performance by a running back against the Browns this year. Eric Dickerson had the previous best outing of 117 yards. This Cleveland defense ranked third in the National Football League tops in the AFC. Well, the dog's got to dig in here. Up right in. Walker, no gain. Marlon Jones out of Central State makes the tackle. Under six minutes. Well, here's where they, here's where it all happens. It's right up there. They're the ones. They have to stop the run when it's passing downs. They've got to apply the pressure. Right there, you see Golick standing up the center, stringing things out, chasing it from the backside. Number 51, Johnson. Defense got to dig in right here and stop him. Palour sends Everett Gay to the right side. Kelvin Martin to the left. Fowler and Walker lined up in the eye behind Steve Pelour. Pelour, slant pattern, Everett Gay. He's down to the 41-yard line, and as he broke the first tackle, he was dangerously close from taking it all the way. There was one defender back there after the 14-yard pickup. They're like an audible situation where Pelour just stands up and sees that room out there and takes it. Delivers the ball right on time. Nice job of Pelour. Watch him hesitate. Right there he hesitates. Gives his receiver time to get into position. Get his body between the ball and the defender. Nice play. Everett Gay has had a big afternoon for the Cowboys. Three receptions for 62 yards. Black on the carry. He'll lose yards. Good defensive play by Cleveland and Michael Dean Perry. What do you think of the rookie out of Clemson, Perry? Everyone knows he's the Fridge's brother. Well, he's, he's playing better than the Fridge at this point in time. He has more sacks in the refrigerator right now. He's probably playing better. The refrigerator has had the, had the weight problem. He's had the broken arm. And I think his brother has just been healthier than, than the refrigerator has. Michael Dean has more sacks this his rookie season than any season for his brother. A small, brother never had that many sacks in a season. A six. small appliance. Yes, he is. Second and 12. Flags everywhere. Three minutes, 56 seconds on the clock. Just inside of four minutes. Ball start prior to the snap. Number 74 offense. Means Dallas now will face a second and 17. Dallas, remember now, has only two timeouts remaining. They used a timeout on their first series of the second half. There's yep. the brain. There's the brain trust. Kevin Sweeney. 
had his shot, started against two extremely tough teams, started against Cincinnati, was mugged against Minnesota. I felt sorry for him in the game. I thought they were going to kill him. But a uh, talented player from a, a football family. Father's a good coach. Bottom of the coach at Fresno State, Jim Sweeney. 14 penalties on Dallas today for 122 yards. 3.38, the clock is moving. Left in the game, second and 17. Lower, scrambling. Will run it near the 40-yard line. Stopping the clock with 3.26 on the clock. Kenny working the Heisman show yesterday in New York had a chance to talk to Troy Aikman the man who has been the center of discussion amongst so many of the Dallas Cowboys fans and he told me that he's trying his best not to pay too much attention to the standings but he would admit he would love to play for Dallas he grew up for a large part of his life in Henrietta Oklahoma only two and a half hours away from Dallas I think Dallas would like to have Troy Aikman too. Sanders the runaway winner he had another big night last night over 250 yards rushing here on third down look at this he's got all kinds of room first down Steve Pelour he tucked it away early he saw the opening right up the middle Kenny well it's hard to tell whether it was zone or man to man this can happen uh, against either defense he takes advantage of it Watch the linebackers right here. Watch these linebackers. Let's see what they do. If they stay on a man, it's a man-to-man. -man. If they back out, it's man-to-man. -man. See number 56 up there taking his man? The reason is nobody back there. They've all run off covering their people. He takes advantage of it, knows where the stick is, slides in there for the first down. Dallas had faced second and 17. They worked their way back to get the first down. Pelour is not afraid to run it. He is the second leading rusher for the Cowboys over 200 yards on the season 234 left in the game flags flies the Cowboys are going to be hit with a delay of game penalty I hate to be redundant but it seems like the Cowboys once they delay are successful offense. on a play they become a little confused they just have no continuity and no rhythm to their offense because of the penalties. I'm not sure what, how many it's been. It's been 14 or 15 penalties. It's been 15 penalties for 120-something yards, and you can't get any kind of continuity to your offense. They make a big play, penalize themselves. They make a play, penalize themselves, and as a result, they've got over 400 yards in offense. That's the top effort against this Cleveland defense this year. First and 15 for Dallas on the 33. Walker the lone setback. Play action fake to Walker. Palour will tuck it in again. He gets back the yardage from the penalty and a couple of yards more. Seven yard gain by Palour. Ball at the 26 of Cleveland. And that brings us to the two minute warning. The two minute warning. Cleveland leading by three with Dallas driving. Consider right here, Jim, as this comes down to a field goal, look at the field conditions out there. Starting to get a little sloppy, a little soggy. The ball will be snapped. It'll be placed seven yards back from where the ball is. And if you look where the huddle is out there, if we can get a shot of where the huddle's located, that's about where the ball will be snapped to. See all the mud around there? Might be a factor. That is exactly the place where Ruzek had a field goal blocked in the first quarter today. Second down and nine for Dallas. Three receivers set. Shotgun formation. Fowler and Walker. Now Fowler comes out in motion. Shuffle pass to Walker. And he gets down to the 21-yard line. Tripped up by Will Hill. Well, it's a little shuffle pass. They tried it a couple times earlier in the game. It's, it's designed to look like a pass. There's a little shuffle to Walker up there. Number 35, Hill reads the play, comes up and makes it, and they get a timeout called by Cleveland. Cleveland calls the timeout, not the Cowboys, so each team has two timeouts remaining. Roger Ruzek waiting in the wings to perhaps send this game into overtime. Of course, Cleveland uh, still would have 
A lot of time left on the clock. Third down facing the Cowboys. Let's tell you tonight on CBS, Kenny Stabler, you talk about your flamboyant billionaires. You ain't seen nothing till you meet Robert Maxwell tonight on 60 Minutes. I look forward to that. Followed by murder. She wrote. With a comma. Yeah. Then it's a Hallmark Hall of Fame presentation. Graham Greene's The Tenth Man, starring Anthony Hopkins. That's all tonight on CBS. Great lineup. Third and four for the Cowboys from the 22-yard line of the Browns with 1.47 remaining. Big play right here. What do you think they'll do, Kenny? I think they have to throw the ball. Daryl Clack is in the game. Unless they, unless they decide to play for the field goal, I don't see them doing that being a 2-11 team. They just beat the down clock by a half second. Fuller's pass incomplete intended for Kelvin Martin. Again, Dallas was disoriented on a key play. There was less than a second on the down clock when the ball was snapped. They could have ill-afforded another five yards to back them up for the field goal attempt. Roger Ruzek will come out now with an attempt to tie the game. Well, he has something working there, and I think a little better throw, you know. He's throwing under duress and pressure. A little better throw, and they've got the first down. But here's what we were talking about right here. This will be a 40-yard attempt. On his career, he is 9 for 10 in the fourth quarter. So his track record is good when the game is on the line. You mentioned the treacherous field conditions. Ruzek's kick is on the way. And it is long enough, just flag. barely, and it is good. There is a flag down. However, it's against the Cowboys. Kenny, he did not clear the crossbar by much. Not if they assess the penalty. That ball barely made it over, as you say. Tripping, number 54 offense, still fourth down. Goes against Randy White. Ha. Tough break. Here's a shot of it right here. You can see the ball coming through the, through the upright. It's hard to see the tripping from that particular angle, but this ball barely makes it in, but it is in. This makes it now a 50-yard attempt for Ruzek. And the Cowboys are screaming on the sideline. They're trying to get the officials' attention. This will be a 50-yard attempt, which is a career long for Ruzek. Dallas on the sideline is wanting a timeout. They don't see us. 50-yard attempt for Ruzek. It's straight, but it is short. No good. Roger Ruzek had been successful on a field goal in the first quarter. It was taken away by penalty. His second one was blocked. Same thing happens now with the game on the line of the fourth quarter. Look at the Cowboys trying to get a timeout on the sideline. Well, they're trying to get it called, and why they want to get it called, who knows? Maybe they want to try. Maybe they may fake it. They may think this is a little bit out of his distance. They want to get... They want to get their heads together over on the sidelines and come up with the correct thing to do, but they don't get it stopped. Here's the reaction. The penalty, awfully costly. You hate to see it from a great player like Randy White, but uh, it's, been, it's the difference right now. And that sums up not only today, but the year for the Cowboys. That's the way it is going. The carry by Mack, loses yardage, and immediately a timeout is called. This man is destined for the Hall of Fame, nine-time Pro Bowler Randy White, who was flagged for Dallas's 16th penalty of the day in a one that wiped off a tying field goal from the board. Well, you know, he knows exactly what the situation is, and as I said earlier, you hate to see it from a guy that's been through as much as Randy White's been through. He's a terrific player, an all-pro player, a great player. Like you said, destined for the Hall of Fame, and, and for it to be assessed against him, you really have to feel for him. He knows how much it cost him. 
125 left on the game clock. And the Cowboys have one timeout remaining. Let's check out the scores. The Giants bomb Phoenix 44 to 7. Cincinnati assures itself now of at least a wild card berth. But even bigger news for the Bengals, Buffalo lost today. And now Buffalo and Cincinnati have the best records. They are tied for the best record in the AFC. And Cincinnati, if it ended up that way, would have the home field advantage through the playoffs because they beat the Bills last week. Big upset today. Tampa Bay over Buffalo. Second and 13 for the Browns. Expect the Cowboys to use another timeout immediately. Again, no gain at all on the play. That's the final timeout for Dallas. 121 left in the game. Cowboys have no timeouts remaining. With 121 left. If they stop Cleveland on this play, they'll still get their hands on the football for one last crack. Bernie Kosar and the Browns just trying to hold on now at the moment. Twenty four twenty one the Browns trying to advance to nine and five. Well he has to be awfully happy right there Art Modell the owner of the Cleveland Browns they've been so close in the last couple of years they had the fumble by Ernest Biner against Denver they almost they've been so close so close and after being here this week and seeing what a, a nice man he is you have to you have to be real happy for their success. with some results already in New England having one Indianapolis having one those are teams right on the heels of the Browns with records in the AFC wild card chase Colts winning down in Miami 31 28 the Patriots winning at home over the Seahawks you know you get in a situation right here you might look at your back and say listen protect the ball they're going to try to strip the ball when you get the ball protect it two hands on it just like that right there. Don't fumble. And a late flag. A flag. I thought someone may have jumped from Dallas, but the flag did not come down until the end of the play from the line judge. It was a late flag, but it's going to be offsides, which occurred at the start of the play. Someone jumped from Offside. the Cowboys. Defense still third down. That'll be number 17 of the day against Dallas. 116 left in the game. Third and seven for the Browns. Stay on the ground here or just go for one last first down to ice it. Kenny. I don't think there's any doubt about it. I think you run the ball right here. 115, 116 left. Uh, Dallas is out of timeouts. I don't think you risk throwing the ball here, but you never know with Bernie Kozar. Well, they brought Tim Manoa well, in as the fullback. They're certainly in a running type formation. They are. Everyone in tight except for Langhorn, who's in motion. Ernest Biner, the tailback, gets the carry. He's short of the first down. 38 yard line after a short gain. Tackled by Two Tall Jones and Kevin Brooks. You throw the ball in that situation, and if you have an incomplete pass, it's going to stop the clock. In this particular situation, you run the ball, and when you change possessions like this, the clock is going to continue to run, which works in favor, of course, of Cleveland. There is a 19-second difference on the down clock to the game clock, which means the Cowboys will get the football with less than 20 seconds remaining and no timeouts. The Browns will just stand back and probably take the five-yard penalty. Browns next week will be playing at Miami. And the Cowboys are at Washington. So one second and the down clock expires. 20 seconds is the difference. 20 seconds left on the game clock. Kelvin Martin is the punt returner for the Cowboys. And I would anticipate that they will be trying their best to storm through and get a block 
With no timeouts left on the clock. They have to do something in a hurry here. No doubt. There they are. They're all up there except for the punt returner and the cover guys on the outside. What we have to have here is we have to have the good snap from the center, feel the ball by the kicker, get the ball away, and the time works on your side. Max Runniger is the punter. A little bit high on the snap. It's a line drive kick away. Martin lets it bounce. Now picks it up. He'll try the left side. He needs to get out of bounds, and he does at the 31-yard line with 10 seconds left. Snap was a little bit high, but the punter fielded it. Yeah, in that particular situation, the punter's not looking for that high, long, spiral, perfect kick. Just get the ball out of there. 10 seconds remaining. And Dallas has no timeouts remaining. Yeah, there's really not much you can do. In this particular situation, for the Dallas Cowboys on offense, what are you trying? It was only 10 seconds left. You use routes where your receivers are on the move. Crossing type routes where if they break a tackle, they have an opportunity to score. Or throw the ball down the field and hope for a great catch. Hope for an interference call. A lot of different ways you can go. They bring Everett Gay, Kelvin Martin, Cornell Burbage, and Kelvin Martin into the game. Kalua rolling out. This will pick up very little yardage. Stops the clock with three seconds. Another penalty. A flag down at midfield. What do you think that is, Kenny? Well, you, you may have an interference call or something on one of the cornerbacks. The pass was incomplete because the receiver came in from out of bounds and caught the ball. As I said, down. as I said, out of bounds and came back in. Now just one last play. Well, all we can do here, Jim, is just throw the ball up, the Hail Mary type thing, and hope something miraculous happens, and that's the only thing left. One last shot. They put all their guys on one side, all their speed people are out to one side. Throw the ball up, hope you can get a tip of some kind. Out of the shotgun, the snap. There it is. The lures, Hail Mary. Alexander in the area. Ball falls to the ground, incomplete. The game is over. And the Cleveland Browns of Marty Schottenheimer advanced to 9-5 and five on the season, which well, ties the all-time franchise record from the expansion season of 1960. Well, they really dodge a bullet, Jim, when they get the penalty down there on the field goal that was successful, which throws, probably throws the game into overtime. They dodge a bullet, and they're still alive, still fighting.